girl, you were scandalous, and I loved it. Yeah. Your show is the best, 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 best show on the air. The Wendy Williams Experience. getting off the elevator. I do know one thing. Um, on hair and makeup for me is always Steve Lindsay. He's coming in today for advice hour because we're going to talk about hair, how to deal with it, the, the, the bonding hair versus the weaving hair versus the micro braids how to take care of hair. Uh, coming from the expert Steve Lindsay and we'll talk about makeup and stuff too. Also, I got a great website to introduce you to, and the owner of this website, he's got great stuff. Don't get scared when you hear the word transsexual or tranny, because sometimes if you need that perfect size 11 shoe, you need to shop where the trannies shop. I'm going to introduce you to Jesse Bolt. We're going to talk about his website. You can go there and see what's all on it. And besides that, oh, well, we're going to gossip, of course. It is what it is. You know the deal. Everybody, welcome to the Wendy Williams Experience. Yeah, ladies, I know you're tired of the subject. To all my people in the struggle, you think God's forgotten about Ladies and gentlemen, it is with great honor and distinction that I introduce to you the queen of all media, Wendy Williams. Oh, got to tell you something. The traffic for the holidays is maddening. But surprisingly, the stores are pretty good. Like, I was out this weekend. I was shocked. I totally, because I went out with total frustration on Saturday. I wanted to get a nail fill. I wanted to go to Home Goods to get some reasonable uh, Christmas balls for a last-minute tree. Um, and then at the last minute, I just caught the Christmas thing. And I said, let me just go get a reasonable tree, one that I don't have to call in, you know, the, the, the holiday decor people. You know, because we have one of them, too. But I don't feel like calling them in. You know, I'm not feeling that this year. But then, you know, the kid, you know, and I can't be selfish. So I went over to, to Kmart to pick up, a, you know, some sort of tree, Martha Stewart or whatever the hell. There's, like, nobody around. Like, the, the streets are crowded. But the stores, pff, nothing. Whoa. No wait anywhere. I was, not like, in Manhattan. Not in Manhattan. Not it, in Manhattan. I was in Kmart this weekend. Okay. And Manhattan everybody was there. Nuts. It was? Yeah. The traffic is nuts. Yeah. yeah. That's it. And yeah, I just can't wait for it to all be over, all of the madness of the holiday season. But I'm feeling it, though. You guys, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas, you know? 
So, um, we got the people poll question coming up next hour. Let me see. Uh, VH1 Big in 04, uh, 05. I have to tell you, the only part of that that I actually saw, because I was so busy doing other things, is when Bobby Brown came on stage. And once I saw it, I was like, I'm good. I'm good. Bobby is a mess. And you got to love him. <laughs> yes. And then Desperate Housewives last night was good. I just want them to get rid of... Um, Alfrey Wittert's character and that that whole that whole plot. I mean, the more I see her on the show, the more I'm like, damn, Desperate Housewives. Why couldn't they have gotten? And this is no offense to Miss Woodard, but why couldn't they have gotten a more desirable modern black woman where her character could have, you know, messed around sexually with anybody on Wisteria Lane or whatever? Like, why Alfre Woodard? I mean, it just I I hate that whole thing. And you know what else I hate? I hate Terry Hatcher and her father. I hate that. Like, you know, <sighs> that show is just, I'm, I'm beginning to say I can take it or leave it. I mean, even when they do something great, I'm beginning to say take it or leave it. I forgot to tell you, we have another guest coming on the show today. Now, you know, I don't go to the movies, so I have no idea who this woman is. However, she is very beautiful. Uh, she's a plus size model. And her name is, and this is based on if you all know her or not, how long she's going to be, um, you know, stay in here. Because as far as I'm concerned, she's coming in to promote a calendar. A beautiful woman. Look, but this is a plus size model. This is not so plus size, right? Oh, she's not plus size. I mean, she looks like she's like big shoulders and stuff like mm -hmm. that. If I could just find her name, I'd be good. Larissa Cross. Do you know that name? Do you know her? Okay, well, I got to tell you something. I was told that she's been in a few movies that you all like to see. I say you all because you know I don't go to the movies. A few of them Morris Chestnut-esque type. She was in Best Man. Okay, you know. She played a stripper in Ooh. Best Man. She played a stripper. Okay. So everybody knows who that is? It's a little Pocahontas-like outfit. Mm. Yeah. Okay, good. All right. So we're getting someplace. Uh, well, she's doing a, um, a calendar signing. She's got a really sexy 2006 calendar. And she's signing her calendar in Brooklyn. So I could ask her, I guess, you know, how do you become a plus size model and all like that? And what was it like being an invest man? And maybe we can make something of this. OK, so she's coming in today. Also, I'm not exactly sure what time she's going to be here. But um, when she because I didn't know how to book her, you know, she's got a whole DVD and, and here's her press kit. She's, you know, double XL and all kind of stuff. I got to tell you something based on Takara on the cover of what magazine? What, what magazine is the call? Sm um, is it, it's not smooth, is it? No, no, no. <laughs> it's, uh, I forgot. But black woman. Yeah, but, you know, if this girl right here, uh, Larissa, is a plus-size model, and then there's Takara, they're the only two in the front running. I can't think of an... By the way, have you seen Emmy recently? Remember? She was our white girl leader, big girls. Remember? Emmy did her thing. She got the big-sized couture in sacks, and, you know, she was the first one to say it's just important that you're healthy, not that you're thin, and, you know, she really led the charge. Have you seen Emmy recently? child please she's gained about 30 pounds and about 30 wrinkles and she just really looks just like a mousy middle-aged mess as opposed to you know you know you don't have to lose the weight but you can still look great i mean she's like definitely not the poster child for the big girls anymore we uh, in my mind i've already given up on her but takara takara's doing the damn thing and this girl larissa um she looks bigger than a regular model, um, so we're going to talk to her and find out how all uh, she got started and whatnot, and, and um, we'll take your phone calls and everything. So let's just go to the phone, Goose, just, you know, all of a sudden and see what we got going on. Uh, but, you know, whenever we do that, you got to be prepared for the craziness. Hey. Hello? Hey, what's up, Wendy? Hi, how are you? I'm all right, I'm all right. This is Jamal from Roselle calling. Hi, Jamal. Yo, Wendy, two things, whatever. The first thing is, did you see that horrible rendition of the national anthem R. Kelly did before the fight on Saturday? No. And he had two people who were stepping no. to the song. Yeah. It was ridiculous. What? And actually, people were booing at the end. It was horrible. I just came, Jamal, from um, BET is included me in their year-end wrap up, you know, the best of 2005, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Oh, that's what's up. And I was just across town. We were filming that and they asked me about R. Kelly and I looked at the camera and said, are we still dealing with that? <laughs> Next. <laughs> Next thing. Yeah, I just, you know, I just, I just can't, Jamal. I just can't. <laughs> and by the way, congratulations to Murder, Inc. I really did think that 
we're going to throw you guys under the bus. Because after they got Kim, but they let Michael Jackson go. Right. And, and they let OJ go because we're still paying for OJ. Yeah, right, right, I right, just right, right. figured it would be Kim, Murder, Inc., and R. Kelly in one fell swoop. Open season. Yeah, Open season yeah, yeah. hip-hop and R&B time. Yeah. Now, Jim, Jim Noel, What's up? do you feel as though because Murder, Inc. got off the, uh, that R. Kelly's going to get it? Or all these cases are not even related to each other? You know what? I don't think the cases are related to each other or oh. whatever. But you know what it is, Wendy? I have my, my degree in criminal justice, okay. actually. And the way I see it is, well, R. Kelly, they're taking so long to finally, like, you know, like, bring it out to court. I think by the time it all comes to, he's going to be found not guilty, and this is going to be swept underneath the rug, unfortunately. And, and, and then um, we will still be putting up with, um, you know, the same R. Kelly situation in our community. Nobody's going to talk about it. Exactly, because unfortunately, like, you know, child molestation and underage rape is just really, like, unspoken in our community. And, yep. We always want to sweep it underneath the rug and say, oh, that's the other people's problem. Mm-hmm. But no, it's a problem in our community, too, just like suicide, thank unfortunately. You, thank you for calling, Jamal. No problem, Wendy. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Hello. Hi. Hey, Wendy. Hey. What's up, Ma? How you doing? I'm doing well. Hey, I was talking about um, I was talking to my sister about the whole uh, desperate, desperate housewives thing. I think they should have picked. Um, remember the lady off of uh, um, Baby Boy, the mom. Yeah. Um, they should have picked her. What's you know her what name? Saying? Yes. I I can't I can't think of what her name is. Damn. Johnson. Johnson. John. AJ Johnson. She's hot. I'm still attracted to her. And I think she like. 40-something. I'm in my 20s. I it, think she's hot. Listen, there's a number of actresses that they could have picked. Why Alfre Wittard? I don't know. I mean, I, I respect her work and everything. She's a beautiful actress. She's a beautiful, strong black woman. Right. But she don't kind of sort of go with the whole... Scheme you know, of the show. Uh, mm-hmm. Guilty pleasure thing. Yeah. All yeah. right. Thanks for calling, Jordan. Let's go to line number five. I finally Thanks, have well. everybody up on my computer. Karen's here. She wants to talk about Desperate Housewives, too. Hey, Karen. Karen. Hey. Hello? Hi. Hi, this is Karen. My name is Dara. Oh, hi. Dara. And this is line number five? Yep. Okay. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Good. I have a little Terrence Howard tidbit. Okay. Um, I met him on a set, on a movie set. He's very, very nice to his fans, signs all autographs, but I do think he's a little bit how you doing. <gasps> Oh. I get the how you doing vibe from him. Hmm. I see it. He gives everybody kisses and hugs and even the fellas. But you want to know what, though? He's brand new in Hollywood. And while he's had a pretty long career, um, he just went from, it seems like he just went from zero to 60 in a matter of 2.2 seconds. And I think yeah. that at this point, the best thing you can do is schmooze everybody. And I hate to say this because I don't wish divorce on anybody, but I almost like that he's divorcing. So then his 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 image is going to stay very, very clean. Now, now, no matter who we see him with, he's a single man in Hollywood dating and having a good time. Thank you so much for calling. No problem. Bye. I just have to check line number three. Kristoff said he had some kind of dream and I was involved. Wendy. Oh, my gosh. You were in this dream I had last night. Oh, my God. You was wearing this pullback ponytail. Oh. We was having Thanksgiving dinner, you and my family. Your your mother, your father was there. Whatever they really looked like, they was in my dream. Mm-hmm. At the end of the dream, you and I wind up in the bed together. Shut up. I'm serious. Oh, I'm serious. Please. And you're telling me how you want me to father your second child. And I'm telling you how you doing. <laughs> You right about that. It, I'm like, what the hell are you doing to my dad? What are you doing doing the asking? <laughs> are you sure we weren't watching Desperate Housewives or something? It, it sounds like one of their little faulty plot lines. That's the damn shit. <laughs> Thanks for calling, Christoph. All right, Wendy. All right, bye-bye. bye-bye. Let's just go to line number two. Treve just wants to say hello, and we can certainly do that in 60 seconds. Hey, Treve. Treve? Hi. Oh, are, are we, hello. Oh, what are you doing, working? Yes, I am. Okay, where are you working? I work at Methodist Hospital. So nice to have you here. Thanks How for calling. How are you, Wendy? Good. Good. I just really want to call and say what's up to you. Thank you. you know I'm listening today. You thank- know, I always listen, but I just want to say what's up. Well, thank you very much. Okay. I appreciate that. And don't worry, and I expect to be at your birthday party. No, it's, it's- it's kind of steep, my hundred dollars, but it's all right. It's, it's worth it. It's the Don's and Divas extravaganza, and with open bar all night long, you would have spent that on brown juice. Oh, exactly, Wendy. It's worth it, honey. More details about the Don's and Divas on the way. Plus, we gossip, gossip, gossip. Advice hours coming up next hour. Keep it here. Wendy, man. My oldest brother, he told me he had a really good surprise. The surprise was that he turned himself into a woman. <laughs> the Wendy Williams experience.
Okay, here's the scenario. It's 2 a.m. and you have to find a pharmacy to fill an emergency prescription. Walgreens has more 24-hour stores than anyone. And you'll be glad to know that Walgreens fills more prescriptions in the middle of the night than anyone. All Walgreens are connected, so your prescription records are on file, no matter which Walgreens you visit. If your Walgreens isn't open 24 hours, chances are there's one right down the road that is. So, every Walgreens is your Walgreens. It's one more reason. Walgreens is the pharmacy America trusts. The stage is set for this year's WBLS party with a purpose. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, gentlemen. Just added Cameo. Cameo Live. Larry Blackman and Cameo. Along with Chai, 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 Chai. Vivian Green. Green. Sarissa. Sarissa. Would have been somewhere with Joe and Donnell Jones. Dress your best and follow the red carpet into a first-class <laughs> night of fun in the Broadway ballroom of the Marriott Marquis Midtown, Saturday night, December 17th. Enjoy a full holiday buffet while DJ Chuck chill out. Drop it like it's hot. With my compadres, the WBLS Air Personality. Hey, I'm Steve Harvey. Jackie Reed. Nephew Tommy. And Trip. Mark Jordan. Hi. Hi, it's me, Wendy Williams. Now leave you rocking your... This is Champagne. This is Hal Jackson. Along with special invited VIPs, you'll never know who might be in the house. Tickets available now at all Ticketmaster locations. Proceeds to benefit Safe Horizons and Day One. Sponsored by the New York City Department of Health and Preferred Equity Solutions. Keeping your family in your home and keeping your home in your family. It's a party with a purpose. From 107.5 WBLS. Give and ye shall be rewarded. Yeah, y'all, what up, man? It's your boy Bow Wow, you know what I'm saying? Check this out. You guys are now listening to the queen of all media, man, right here, Wendy Williams. Yeah, everybody. And it's the Wendy Williams experience at 29 minutes away from 3 o'clock. This hour of the show is being brought to you by MasterCard. When you carry MasterCard, you carry clout. Don't forget about December 17th. It's our big WBLS Christmas party with a purpose. It's at the Marriott Marquis on 45th Street and Broadway. A full holiday buffet. Of course, the bar and the live entertainment, including Cameo and Vivian Green, including Jaheem and Donnell Jones. It's going to be fabulous. And we would love to see you there. It's our WBLS family and you too, because you're a part of the family you listen you can get your tickets now at Ticketmaster they're on sale at Ticketmaster oh sure 212-301-307-7171 sponsored by the New York Department of Health and Preferred Equity Solution as well as our friends in Nork Razak Hair Products and the proceeds of our Christmas party with a purpose benefit day one formally break the cycle um, it used to be called Break the Cycle. Now it's called Day One. And it's just fabulous. Uh, December 17th. Make it a date. That's a Saturday, by the way. That's next Saturday. The WBLS Christmas Party with a Purpose. And we'll all be there. Me, Steve, Vaughn, Champagne, you name it, we'll be there. Hal Jackson. We'll all be there. And we'll see. We do this every year. Oh, sure. We have a great time, too. Dons and Divas tickets are heating up uh, the streets. Something awful. I ran into so many people over the weekend who um, had either already purchased tickets or, you know, if some people actually, I ran into this woman uh, at the Home Goods, ironically, who who, um, who won passes. And, uh, you know, she'll be there and whatnot. So I'm real excited about that. But more details about that coming up in the show. What a day. When's the snow supposed to start again? Between like- 8 and 10. Now, we have, um, I have um, a big black tie formal to go to tonight, you know, um, Chelsea, at the Chelsea Lighthouse restaurant and stuff. That's why I'm wearing, well, I got a bag full of black stuff. Actually, black tie formal doesn't mean you have to wear black. I don't know why, I, you know, I was stuck on the black, but whenever I think of black tie formal, I think, okay, $25,000 for the big, for the most expensive table. I think it's like $5,000 for the cheapest table. Yeah. It's a big push t- towards raising more money for HIV and AIDS. Some of you all might be going. I'll see you at the um, Lighthouse Restaurant at Chelsea Pier tonight. It's going to be fun. WBLS is proud sponsors of TV411. Oh, yeah, this improves your reading and writing and math skills, too. TV411, Fridays at 12.30 p.m. It's lunchtime. Lunchtime learning on Channel 13. Uh, you can log on to our website at WBLS.com for more information about any of the above. 
and anything that you... Oh, and you can log on to my website, thewendywilliamsexperience.com, to find out all what's it doing um, as a lead-off to Dons and Davis. Big shout-out to Jersey City. Do you all know Corleone? Who doesn't, right? Okay, well, Corleone doesn't want me to give his telephone number out on the radio, but if you by any chance know him... Um, ask him about tickets for the Dons and Divas extravaganza. Jersey City, Corleone has tickets. And and more details about, you know, all what's it doing and everything like that. Oh, we got the whole show ahead of us. Why do I feel like I have to say everything in one break? Let's continue on, Goose. Do you have some nice music to play? Absolutely. All right, play something nice for everybody, and it's the Wendy Williams Experience till 7 o'clock on 107.5 WBLS. Today's R&B and Classic Soul, 107.5 WBLS. Yo, Dibs, Ja Rule. Yo, what up, what up, y'all? This Lil C's. Yo, what's up, y'all? This is Wyclef Jean, a.k.a. The Preacher's Son, and you're listening to the Wendy Williams Experience. Hey! U-B-L-S. Broadcasting live, it's the queen of radio, Wendy. <laughs> Wendy Williams. Oh boy. You know, I'd be a fool today and probably thought of as a hater if I did not congratulate um, the Gotties for getting off. Um, I definitely thought they were going to stick it to you guys. And personally speaking, I don't have any problem with you. But the bigger picture is, is that, you know, they let OJ off. So I feel like we're still paying for that. They let Michael Jackson off. I feel like we're still paying for that. You know, they they put Kim in and I thought that that wasn't enough time. Like they they need, you know, bigger fish to fry. I figured they'd want to do it in threes, you know, because because things come in threes. I thought it'd be Kim, Gotti's and R. Kelly. You know what I mean? So that's all. Congratulations on getting off and, and the best to, in, uh, to the entire uh, Murder, Inc. label, the Inc., the Gotties, um, the Lorenzos, Chris, um, Irv, Ja Rule, Ashanti, whatever. The best to all of you all in in 2006. Um, much success. What a Christmas <clears throat> gift. Yeah, what a Christmas gift. I really did think that they were going to go in. And what I thought they were going to go in really was based on, sure, there might be some guilt involved. You know what I mean? And maybe they just flew under the radar and got off. You, you understand You understand what I'm saying, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. But I thought the bigger picture is that we're still, we as black people are still paying for OJ and we're still paying for um, Michael Jackson. And so little Kim was only a little tiny piece. Mm-hmm. You know, if they can get the Gotties and if they can get R. Kelly, then that would have been the, the bad luck dealt in threes. They're just like they say, good luck is, is in threes also. So congratulations. I hope this doesn't start the good cycle where now R. Kelly's going to get off. Because, you know, now that they got off, now we got three people to get off. R. Kelly shouldn't get off. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm not mad at the Gotties. Because at the end of the day, um, there are plenty of successful people out here throughout history who've made their base money off whatever turned it into something good and why be chastised because they made good it's not like the, the goddies are killers and, and bad guys and stuff and by the way shout out to ashanti ashanti i want you to know that i've been a fan of mud jeans since the way before this whole 300 dollar jeans 900 dollars from red monkey i've been a fan of mud jeans since forever i still am not embarrassed to say i get my mud jeans from kohl's and paris blue jeans I want you to know, Ashanti, that in, in mud jeans, I wear a size nine. And I know that you have a new line of mud jeans. And just let me let you know that I don't feel as though it's slumming to put on a pair of mud jeans for the economical price of $30 a pair. I know a lot of people have a problem with that. You know, like, like why wear like Levi's and mud jeans? Why wear off-brand jeans when, you know, jeans, you know, what, what was somebody said the other day? Um... You wear your cash on your ass, you know, these days. Like, you know, your label dictates, you know, what your pocket is. Now, you know, I don't feel that way. I mean, you know, I like the little, you know, dilly designer jeans and stuff like that. But let the record show. At the end of the day, there's nothing like a comfortable pair of Forever 21s. That's right. I said it. The the, the brand Forever 21. What? Mm-hmm. Their low rise hits right at the right point. Puffy, I was trying on a pair of your Sean John jeans the other day. You know, my usual size 30. They are huge. Like, they are really forgiving. Whereas the, the mix, Miss 60s jeans, forget about it. 
Seven jeans are really tight? They're really tight. Yeah. I like I don't get it, but I can tell you one thing. I can slide into a pair of mud jeans virtually unscathed and, and Levi's too, so you know. Anyway, let's hit the telephone. Michelle's on line four. She wants to talk about the holiday season. Hello. Hello. Hey, hey Harlem Hardy. Uh, hi Michelle. Hello. Hey, hi. it's it's Wendy. Hi, it's Dad. Oh, hi Yvette. Dad, like you get something. <laughs> hi, Wendy. Hi. I'm an avid listener of yours. Um but listen, what I really called for is you um you guys had to play your advertisement on how to become a secret shopper and I missed getting the number. Can you just do it again or just give me the number if you know it? You know, I don't I what radio station do you listen to? <laughs> Okay, well, uh, this is a syndicated show. Don't say it like I know. The 866-GET-WENDY is for everybody. And by the way, special shout out to our new friends in Memphis, Tennessee. You all feel free. It's 866-GET-WENDY and you jump on the phone too. Um, you know what? You're going to have to call the sales department of the radio station and ask them. Cause when okay, the, offhand, you have the number for that. I don't even know what you... Oh, for the sales department? 212-447-1000 uh -huh. two, two, is the main number. Thousand. And then, okay. Yeah, then Thank ask... Thank you so much, Wendy. You're welcome. Okay, bye bye. Take care, bye bye. Uh, line number two, Michelle. Um, she has something going on with her boyfriend. Hey, Michelle. Hey, Wendy. What's going on? With Good. You? How can I help you? Love the show. Thank you. Don't always agree with you, but I love the show. Oh, no, but thank you. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> no, I just, I just need your opinion slash advice okay. as to how to get, let's see, be independent. I'm gonna be twenty-seven years old. Yeah. You turned on my radio. Okay, I'm be 27 years old. Mm -hmm. And um, I just want to just go out there and be a woman for my... I mean, I have a job. I'm not going to pay a job, but I just want to provide for my son and just... Basically, I want to go out there into the, the whole adult world. And I, I'm scared that I have to come running back to, like, mommy and dad. No, no, I understand. Well, here's the thing. Mm -hmm. Fake it until it's a realized dream. You know what I mean? We're all scared in life about yeah, various I things. Coming into me, like you know, like nice little size check coming to me. Yeah. So I want to take that and go with his father because his father is very supportive. You know. Yeah. Besides me being. You know, the that can be. Well, here's the thing. Um, you know, you asked me how to be independent. First of all, um, it's a frame. It's a it's a frame of mind until you can actually be it. You know, like bite your tongue as opposed to asking other people for money or handouts or whatever. Uh, it's 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 about being fearless. And even if you don't, if you're really not fearless, if you fake it, one day your reality will catch up to you right. faking it. And one day, yeah. one day you'll be fearless. And I wish you well, Listen, Michelle. It takes time. Okay, it's not going to happen. One thing. Okay. One thing. The age limit for um, Don's and Divas is? 21 and over. Oh, dad. My sister can't come. I can't. Okay. okay. Yeah, she knows All she right, can't. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Uh, Rita, I see on my computer is on line six, and she wants to know. Kind of, hey, Rita. Hey, how are you? Now, do I have this correct? The computer says you want to know what type of champagne will be served at Don's and Divas? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, 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 I have to be honest with you. What? Um, first of all, the usual champagnes, but I am introducing a new champagne debuting in this country called Giorgio Vaselli. And wow. And it's from the boozy section of Champagne, France, if I uh -huh. have this correctly. Uh, it's right next door to the vineyard for Vouv and Moet. Oh my gosh, I know that place. I've been there. I've got to tell you something. Okay, because I am a diva and that's what I was concerned about. Okay. What champagne was going to be served. Then I need you to tell me what you feel about this Giorgio Vaselli. It is brand new to this country. As a matter of fact, some of the people from the actual boozy uh, region will be at the Dons and Divas. They're flying it over to debut it. Oh, righty. And it'll be complimentary, right? Yeah. Uh, Yes, it will, as a matter of fact. Okay, great. I I do believe. <laughs> <laughs> right, so that was my concern. I have my ticket already. Here's the thing. Have you ever had champagne with a linen label? No, so I haven't. Get ready for the next level. Oh, cool! Exactly. I'm looking so forward to this. Now there are three different la la uh, three different levels of the Giorgio Vaselli. Um, the the one that I believe will be deb debuting at the Dons and Divas is the one that is comparable to Vouv and um, the better Moet. 
Okay. Which would be, you know, the Nectar Imperial and not the, um, I mean, you know, the regular is fine, but you know what I'm saying. Okay. Well, yeah. cool. Yeah. Well, I just want to say that the best party that I ever went to with one of yours was downtown Newark, New Jersey at the Newark Club when you were given the key to the city. Oh, yeah. That was a, the mayor. That was put on actually by the mayor. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. That was the, one of the best parties I ever yeah, went to. That was nice. That was, yeah. that was more like a reception. Alrighty. Okay. So I'll see you at Dons and Divas. Cool. And by the way, <laughs> shout out to everybody in Philly and Delaware. I've got your Dons and Divas hotline number. Are you ready, my friends? I'm going to give you five seconds to get a pencil and paper. Give it. Okay, 302-250-6650. 302-250-6650. Advice hours. Yes! Man. I've been with this guy for like five years, and I know you say don't cheat. I know, but I can't help it. I want to. Do you have intention on getting married? We're married. Oh, my God! The Wendy Williams Experience. Ladies and gentlemen, Hassan Salam. Every night it's a fight, no matter what it's about. Soon as she opens her mouth, she's down for the count. Spent the night on the couch, deep under the covers. Wondered where she could run to recover, if she'd ever love another. Truth is, it's fear that keeps her there. Scared that the scars will just follow her everywhere. All her girlfriends figure, what's the use? So she takes the abuse and accepts his excuse. Every dispute ends just like it was scripted. A dozen roses and a hospital visit. Rationalizing why he did it, like God deserved it. It was my fault, it wasn't on purpose Used to go to church in disguise Just to cover her black eyes But stop, cause she couldn't be chastised Lost in the lies But if you don't love yourself You can't love someone else And they say for that reason, no more tolerance Tired of the cheating, the lies and the beatings Told him she was leaving and just that quick He snuffed her as he yelled, you can't leave me So she finally became fearless and mustered the courage To walk through the door as she covered her stomach Just an angel with a broken wing falling from above Took a lifetime to find out what was true love Your radio station WBLS wants you to know that there is someone who will listen. That there is someone who will help. Call Safe Horizon at 1-800-621-HOPE. 107.5 WBLS, New York. Let's take some calls from the request line. Call the number one. Earlier today, she talked to radio host Wendy Williams. Dateline's Hoda Kotb talks with New York radio DJ Wendy Williams. Earlier this year, on Wendy Williams' New York radio show. Wendy Williams is a national syndicated radio personality. Jimmy guest tonight. Why is Wendy Williams fast becoming the queen of all media? She made her mark making celebrities extremely uncomfortable on her popular New York radio show. She's got a TV show on VH1. Please welcome troublemaker Wendy Williams. Oh my lord, have I really been That was the most erratic, weird interview I'd ever heard. I'd ever heard. The Wendy Williams Experience. I'm Wendy's mom. Hi, I'm Wendy's dad, and both of us want to know... How you doing? Someone is mighty as a lion. Everybody needs some. Should I leave? Like, is that selfish to my son? Come get some. Let me tell you, Wendy, it's really a trouble with a dude. Advice out. I'm having a problem with my fiancé and his family. I was in a relationship with this girl for like 18 months. She told me the relationship meant nothing. Oh, always drama. Call Wendy right now. 1-866-GET-WENDY. Fax Wendy at 866-WENDY-FAX. Wendy, can you give me advice on plastic surgery? Mm -hmm. All righty, everybody. It's the Wendy Williams experience in true to experience form, and it is what it is. Our guest for this hour, uh, hair and makeup artist Steve Lindsay, is about five minutes away, which in New York traffic means about 25 minutes away, which means he might not make it for his close-up. But as soon as he gets here, you'll be the first one to know. Also, um, so in other words, uh, hold off on your hair and makeup questions. And right now, I'm taking telephone calls regarding the snafus and drama going on in your life. 866-GET-WENDY is my telephone number. We've got a brand new intern uh, working with us today. Please don't give her fever on the phone. What's her name again? Debbie. Debbie. Debbie's here. All right. And so Debbie's in the other room getting the phone. So um, be nice to her. It's her first day. Um, Okay, now, coming up next hour, I did want to talk with you about um, Dave Chappelle. I also wanted to talk with you next hour about Mike Jones, Lindsay Lohan. 
Are you a real wine nista, like a person who loves wine and you know the pr appropriate thing to do at the appropriate time? Because I was reading one of my magazines this weekend and I found what they were saying to be quite interesting. In addition, some great references to, like, I'm not a wine nista, but I know that I would love to get a bottle of Rolling Stones wine. You know, black bottle with the tongue. Uh. It, I use it as a collector's. Like, that's a cool thing to show up at somebody's house with for 35 bucks. Are you kidding me? So I'm going to give you some websites about cool celebrity wines and, and whatnot. And I'll do that next hour. Plus, I wanted to talk with you about... Dun, dun, dun. Jay-Z pulled his autobiography from the shelves. And I'll let you know why next hour. In the meantime, it is now time for Wendy's. Oh, and, and also, um, this hour, I want to give you some great websites for those of us with bigger feet. And for those of you who are pregnant, who want to glam it up for the holidays, I've got a very glamorous uh, set of websites to show you to go to as well. Um, but first, I'd like to start with Wendy's Medical Minute. And my medical minute for today is about the Master Cleanse Diet. Okay. Um, I thought about you all weekend. Well, here comes Steve right in the middle of my medical minute, so now he's going to have to wait. <laughs> but he's here. Um... The Master Cleanse Diet. I thought about you all weekend because I was like, to do it, to not do it, to do it, to not do it. I really want to do it, and I am going to do it. It's just that I was too overzealous in saying that I was going to start it today. But Taryn has started it today, yes. and I'm sure many of you guys have started it today. I would just love to know how you're, how you're doing. Let me know by the end of the week. Um, the problem is, is that I have so many different things to do this week, and I wasn't able to make all those bathroom promises to myself. And then... Um, I just have to do this when I can spend a whole 10 days of wearing sweats, going to the bathroom, and not doing, you know, holiday party stuff. Like tonight, I'm going to a black tie dinner. What kind of, you know, every second I'm going to the bathroom and whatnot, Harry Belafonte, Kenneth Cole are going to be there, and I'm peeing. <laughs> so I had to hold off. Plus, you know, free food and good food, I might add. I'm not missing out on the food this week. Oh. I'm going to do it in January. I'll be honest with you. You know, I got a lot of eating events coming up, and I would just rather, um, you know. But uh, for those of you doing it, I would love to know how you're doing. Now, let's bring Steve again. Oh, Steve in. Come on, Steve. You have to come in, and then you have to sit right down. Karen, uh, on line number five, thank you for calling. We're not going to be using your call um, regarding the man that you're dating. And also, Kim, thank you for very much also. Your calls were backup calls if Steve didn't get here on time and he just happens to be here. Okay, just straighten up your microphone. we got to get right to the phone. Debbie, keep the hair and makeup phone calls coming in there. Let her know, Kristen, to keep the hair and makeup phone calls coming. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is Steve Lindsay. Hi, he everybody. does my hair and makeup. Hi, Wendy. And um, this is not about what he does for me. This is about what the suggestions he has for you pertaining to hair and makeup. Steve has been in the business for how long, Steve? Oh, my God. I'll say 20 years. I started when I was two. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Didn't we all? And um, he's worked um, on Shirley Ralph. And go ahead, give your resume quickly. Mary Wilson. Mm -hmm. um, I worked at a shop called Hairstyle by Joseph. So we had a lot of celebrities come in there. I worked okay. Etta James and a bunch of people. Okay, pull up your microphone. He's going to need headphones in order to hear phone calls. In the meantime, um, I'll start out with some basic questions. For instance, how often, Steve, should someone relax their hair? Um, normally, it should be every two months. We need headphones quickly. And that's usually depending on, on the texture. If someone's texture is really fine and they need a relaxer, they might just want a texturizer. Okay. Or they might want to relax their hair maybe once every six months because maybe they don't need to every two months. If your hair is really thick and very coarse, you might want to do it every two months. Okay. Now, when someone is dealing with relaxing and coloring, mm -hmm. what are the rules? Well, you should not color your hair at the same time that you have a relaxer. Even if you're going a darker color that has no bleach in it? Well, okay. now, if you have a relaxer, the cuticle of the hair is already opened up. Okay. So it'll accept product a lot quicker and a lot faster. Okay. If someone's going darker, mm -hmm. you can put a rinse on. And a rinse will act as a permanent color. Oh. Simply because the, the cuticle of the hair is already opened up, mm -hmm. so it'll accept. But it won't rinse out? It won't rinse out as quickly. Like I said, with the cuticle of the hair being opened up because of a chemical process then 
it will accept, accept the rinse the a better. lot faster. Okay, um, how does it work? Now, I know um, you, um, I, I go to this salon in New York called Salon Santa Cruz. I'm mm. not saying this to suggest that you guys go. <laughs> I'm just telling you my relationship with Steve. Steve happens to do hair there. I get my hair done, um, mostly my fake hair done by Steve. He absolutely implicitly takes care of me. And my real hair, by and large, is done by the owner of the salon, Santa. Mm-hmm. And, and I've been going to your salon for over 10 years now, um, with the exception of when you all left me dead on the turnpike in Philly. <laughs> and even then, I would enjoy driving up to Madison Avenue and going. Uh, communicating with your stylist. Now, I've been one for, to bring in pictures, mm-hmm. and nobody ever looks at me like a nutty nutball when I bring in pictures and say, this is how I want my hair cut or the color. Do your best or I'll use yours, okay? Come on. I don't we, have any. Okay, fine, steal, whatever. All right. Headphones. Um, <laughs> it's unbelievable. This is a radio station. Uh, what is the matter with bringing pictures, whether it's of a cut or of a collar? I recommend it 100% oh. because if a client cannot tell you what they want, they can show you with a picture. And a picture is worth a thousand words. And if the client's hair is not suitable for what the picture is, your stylist should be smart enough, <laughs> you know, to yes. let you know that, listen, your hair won't do this. Okay. Very nice. Now, um, I remember you telling me, and I forgot what it was, you said uh, that Shirley Ralph did something for you that that changed your life or told you well, something? you know, I've worked with Cheryl Lee Watch Ralph. Watch your water. When, uh, th- okay. Yeah, thank you. Okay. I've worked with Cheryl Lee Ralph when she was um, on her uh, Broadway show, and mm. um, she came into the shop on quite a regular basis, and I, the one day that she came into the shop, I had um, an argument with the customer. Okay. <laughs> it was, um, and I was really stressed out, uh-huh. and Cheryl looked at me so beautifully and said darling we love our hairdressers they make us pretty and from that day forward i said i'm not in this business for grief that right you know (laughs) if you if you if you come to your hairdresser just treat them right that's all they're there for your best interest in the long run and i know personally if someone treats me nicely i'm going to go out of my way to do the best that i can okay i'm going to round off the tipping thing uh, what's the standard tip on a hundred dollar bill? Um, I'd say twenty dollars to to the hairdresser. To the hairdresser. How much to the shampoo? It's person? usually around twenty percent, just like tips in in in, in what a about restaurant. To the, what about to the shampoo person? It depends on what they're doing. If they if your shampoo person gave you a really good shampoo and you really feel With good massage. about it, then mm-hmm. you know on a hundred dollar um, ticket, then. You know, if they're if you're just getting if the person client is just getting a wash and a cut, then maybe five dollars. Okay. If they're getting a, a chemical process and the assistant is helping out with the rinsing uh-huh. and the application or whatever, then maybe a little more. Okay, but twenty percent uh, is standard on a hundred dollars. Now let's go to line number seven, Goose. Um, Kim wants to know the best hairstyle for a wedding. Um, Steve, can you hear? Mm-hmm. All right, Kim, you're on the radio. Hi. Yeah. Huh. It's not just the hairstyle, but I wanted to know what's the best way to style a weave for a wedding. Oh, it's a weave. like really natural. Well, um... <laughs> you know the first thing that comes to my mind when you ask me that Kim is um, are you a big girl no you're not you're a no, thin girl a medium medium okay mm-hmm. why well, do you ask that because we uh, always talk about this the proportion of your head in proportion with your body you don't want to look like the snowman big girl <laughs> you got this little tiny head the haircut is cute as hell you look like Halle Berry but look at the rest okay back to pictures <laughs> you know what I'm saying think okay. about yeah. Audrey Hepburn skinny okay. wave how did she look her best in an updo yeah on your wedding day is the day that you're supposed to be the princess you're supposed to look like your best and everybody's supposed to go oh wow so um, if you're a big girl I would say wear your hair long off your face you know and and full that way you look slimmer Okay. Yeah. See, yeah. I, I always say that, too. The bigger the hair, the smaller the hips. It's about proportion. And, uh, okay. you know, and when I have customers come into my chair, I, I, I let them know. If they're a big girl, I try to let them know in the kindest of ways, listen, you know, you got to work with, you got to make yourself look smaller. If that's what you know, I mean... It's an optical illusion. It's, it's an optical illusion. It's, yeah. it's not to insult. It's not to hurt anybody because there's a lot of big girls who love being big, and there's nothing wrong with that nothing. either. Because there's a lot of men that like big girls. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> you know? Kim. I All wish right. you well. Line number one, Thank Deidre um, has dry scalp, and she wants you to recommend a product dry scalp Mm-mm. well um you know i can't really recommend a product at this time i usually recommend the products that we have in our salon astalance has wonderful products um oh? astalance okay S- I'm, i think i'm pronouncing it right well it's the astalance company why not it. head and shoulders um well head and shoulders is good for dandruff it's That's never a- worked for me oh, okay oh, it, it hasn't okay no. um dry itchy scalp is that the problem yes um 
Paul Mitchell's Tea Tree Shampoo. Paul Mitchell Tea Tree? Tea Tree. Try that. And I got to tell you something. And tea tree oil for whatever. I mean, that, ooh, I, my Feels medicine good. cabinet. I've always... used tea tree oil once. It mm. came in a perm that I purchased. Okay. And after like three days or so, it was like I didn't put anything in my hair. Okay. Well, try it on a regular basis. And okay. how often do you wash your hair? Once a week. Once a week. That's fine. Try using um, tea tree. Um, once a week. Okay. If you still find that that is giving you problems, then wash your hair twice a week. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. Line number three. Tara wants to know how to get the Tyra Banks hair look. And we always... Talk. Can I say it, Steve? <laughs> hey, Tara. Get yes. a lace front. A lace front wig, honey. <laughs> that is all. not Tyra's hair growing from her roots. It's a lace front wig. Beyonce, all the girls wear them. They are absolutely fabulous. Steve, for 2006, you got we got to get one of those for me. Okay. I just love the lace front wigs. Okay. Where can I get that from? Well, first of all, be ready to peel. Go. Be ready to peel some bucks. How out much? They're very expensive. Well, you can get a a moderately priced one for four hundred dollars. Oh my gosh, please! And you can get a very expensive one for fifteen hundred. Where can I? And I um, bet you Tyra's is fifteen. Where can I book an appointment with you? With me? Oh, um, well, you you can call the shop and and make an appointment. It would be great. Give the shop telephone number. The shop telephone number is two one two six eight four two three eight six. That's Salon Santa Cruz on Madison Avenue between twenty seventh and twenty eighth. And we might see each other in there because I go there too. I'm sorry. Can you repeat that again? Two one two six eight four two three eight six. Okay. I'm looking forward to seeing you. Thank, Thank you, Tara. You. Okay, bye. You know, um, line number five, Tanisha wants to talk about texturizers. In our next break, um, I would also love to be able to talk about hair, where, where you get hair, you get what you pay for, mm -hmm. wigs, um, weaves, mm -hmm. bonding, I'd love it. Sure. and all that uh, fake hair stuff. Sure. Tanisha, go ahead. She, she has a texturizer on line number five, Goose. Hi, how are you? Good. Hi. Um, my question is, now, a texturizer, I know, is kind of like a perm. Now, do you just apply it to the root the second application or do you do the whole head again it should like always a virgin be done to the roots always to the okay. virgin application unless your first application was not done sufficiently then you might want to run it through and leave it on for a few moments right okay and one more question mm -hmm. um i'm thinking about getting micro braids um mm -hmm. like in the next couple of days what Expect can i do damage. to my hair i'm sorry <laughs> no. expect damage Expect damage. Those are no, no, very no. damaging. I didn't get a texturizer. No, no, no. That's a, that's a separate question. That's for someone else. Oh. But micro braids, you're saying I'm going to get hair damage, period? Yep. yep. I, I, would, I would say expect it. Unless um, you have, like, great hair in the greatest condition of the world. Like Oprah. Like like a white woman. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> well, I'm not that white women have the best texture of hair. Please don't, you know, don't don't quote me on that. But, you know, your hair, you know, African-American hair is, is if, and I'm sorry, please, I'm, I don't know if you are African-American, but you've got to be very careful because micro mini braids, the weight of them on whatever hair you're putting them on Ooh. could weigh, could cause damage, mm -hmm. cause right. serious breakage. So you've got to be very, very careful. Okay. Well, is there like a time period you should keep them in and then take them out? I don't recommend then... micro mini braids for anyone. I mean, it's a great look, but unfortunately, I, not only the weight, but when your hair starts to grow out and if your hair is curly, when your hair grows mm -hmm. out in the curl, the hair will twist and turn and you also have further damage. So I just don't recommend it at all. Okay. Okay. All right, thank you. You're well, welcome. thank you, Tanisha. We'll talk about an alternative then to micro, because you can't say wear your natural hair. Women like me no. will absolutely freak. Well, sure. So we'll talk about the best route <laughs> if you're going fake. Okay. And uh, the best way to keep it good if you're a natural girl. Uh, mm. Keep it here, everybody. Steve Lindsay is in the building. And Monday, man. George Bush doesn't care about black people. And you know, George Bush doesn't care about Wendy Williams. The Wendy Williams Experience. Wow. The stage is set for this year's WBLS party with a purpose. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, gentlemen. Just added Cameo. Cameo Live. Larry Blackman and Cameo. Along with Chai, 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 Vivian Green. Green. Sarissa. 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 Sariss
Dress your best and follow the red carpet into a first-class night of fun in the Broadway Ballroom of the Marriott Marquis Midtown, Saturday night, December 17th. Enjoy a full holiday buffet while DJ Chuck, chill out. Drop it like it's hot. With my compadres, WBLS Air Personality. Hey, I'm Steve Harvey. Jackie Reed. Nephew Tommy. And Trip. Mark Jordan. Hi, it's me, Wendy Williams. Now that leave you rocking your... This is Champagne. Rock. This is Hal Jackson. Along with special invited VIPs, you'll never know who might be in the house. Tickets available now at all Ticketmaster locations. Proceeds to benefit Safe Horizons and Day One. Sponsored by the New York City Department of Health and Preferred Equity Solutions. Keeping your family in your home and keeping your home in your family. It's a party with a purpose. From 107.5 WBLS. Yeah, today's R&B and Classic Soul is on... 107.5 WBLS. It's the Wendy Williams Experience. And the phones are still open. It's Advice Hour. Steve Lindsay is here. Yeah. Um, you know, if you are looking for a decent place to get your hair done, um, just, uh, you know, a, a name to throw out to you. Why not try Steve at Salon Santa Cruz? Um, you know, you deserve the best. And as far as I'm concerned, and, you know, I've been going to this place. This, this place, to me, is a nice place without being so upscale that you feel uncomfortable and it is definitely not ghetto it is on a very fashionable high-end part of madison avenue um between 20s what are you between 27th and 28th yeah between 27th and 28th street and it is a ground floor walk in and that is very hard to come by when you think in terms of black hair or women of color hair in manhattan a lot of times you have to walk up the flight of stairs or you have to go to an unsavory neighborhood or but, whatever. But I'm sorry to cut you off, but if your hairstylist is really good and you like them and you get along, they, you know, you get lots of compliments, then go where you need to go, you know? Oh, well, no, I'm, my, and I love Santa at the, at the shop, mm -hmm. but I'm to the point now where wherever you go. Mm -hmm. is where I go huh. because I used to not have an Love attachment to you know any particular person I just like the shop I, mm -hmm. I do I, I, I gotta tell you I do I like the shop Santa is a hard working woman um, of color I might add you know she has been you know in the beginning it was a struggle with this business now her business has been open Salon Santa Cruz for approximately 15 years 20 years we just had our 20 year anniversary there you go the and way if it wasn't for Santa I would have not I wouldn't have met you and, and, and if it so wasn't for my friend Lisa Carnegie who used to get her hair done there before she moved to Virginia Virginia, she's the one who recommended me all those years ago, and I've been going. I mean, you guys have, have been with me through breakage, through you know all kind of crap, and um, I just appreciate it. So, Salon Santa Cruz, and what's his telephone number? Two one two six eight four two three eight six. And, and his, the shop is closed on Mondays. So. Uh, okay, and his name is Steve Lindsay. All right, let me just get to this business in hand, then we're going to go to the telephone. This hour, the Wendy Williams Experience is brought to you by E Entertainment Television, and. Um, Coming up next hour, I happen to have some passes for Color Purple. If you guys would like to go, make sure that you're listening for your chance to win those passes. Um, real quickly, I want to let you all know that the Dons and Divas extravaganza <clears throat> is virtually sold out. There are still a few tickets left. If you go to PayPal.com, um, you know, it, you know, get your tickets. If you don't have a PayPal account set up. Everybody knows somebody who does have one. Get somebody to put, get your tickets for you. You can go to Dons and Divas 2005 at yahoo.com. That's an email address, but there's a button where you can hit to get your tickets. Now, listen to this. And this just started as of today. Uh, if you're buying five or more tickets, you can get delivery service. Why? Now, uh, the number I'm about to give you is a 973 number. Don't be scared if you live in the 718. I said you get delivery service, so it is what it is. Get ready. 973 for delivery service of five or more Dons and Divas extravaganza passes. December 22nd, it's happening here in Manhattan at an undisclosed location. Um, it is the Black Party. It is, uh, you know, open bar. It is hosted by Mary J. Blige. It is going to be fabulous, a.k.a. Wendy's Funhouse. So, you know, I like to have fun. Uh, 973 for the delivery of five or more tickets. 418 7000. 973. Four one eight seven thousand. Um, all right, let's go to the telephone. Zola was on line number four, Steve, and she wants to know a product that she can use for hair growth. Hi, Zola. 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 
Shannon. Okay, Shannon. Uh, apparently, all the all the phone calls dumped from the last break. It's okay. Hi, Shannon. Hi. How you doing, Wendy? Good. Are you calling about hair or makeup? Yeah, hair. Okay. Um, I've got natural hair, and I've been letting it grow out for a few years. Mm-hmm. It's a decent length, not low. I think it's probably right about to my shoulder. Um, but the question I have is, what can I do just to get it soft? You know. My hair is, it can get so nappy sometimes, and you know how you wake up and it's just matted and dry like a Brillo pad, like like how Chris Rock was on that, what was that movie he was in? It was like a crackhead. I mean, I have bad hair when it's, when it's bad, it's bad. What can I do just to keep it moist and soft like all the time? Well, being that your hair is, as you said, nappy and <laughs> all the terms that you used, um, <laughs> you know... You might want to put a texturizer, which is not going to straighten your hair, but loosen the curl and make it a little softer for you to deal with. Is that as severe as her doing a perm on her hair? No, it's not. Texturizer will just loosen the curl and make it easier to work with. How much does it cost to get a texturizer in your hair at, uh, or the going rate, whether it's with you or anybody? What's... I can't tell you what the going rate is, but at our salon, a texturizer is the same price as a relaxer. And how much is that? $75. Okay. And that's not including your cut and style and stuff like that. So please, you know... (laughs) <laughs> and that'll do it. And well, it should do it. Another option, if you don't want to put any chemicals in your hair at all, you yeah. might want to braid it, you know, okay. and, and sit under a dryer and let it let it dry with the with the cornrows in your okay. hair, and which is what they used to do in the old days. Uh-huh. And then when it dries, pick it out and wear it as a big fluffy fro. And maybe you could use some kind of, you know, I, I mean, we use great products in the shop, but I also recommend there's a lot of stuff for people that may not be able to afford the top line shelf. There's a lot of good products that have been around for many years that like are what? very inexpensive, like ProLine Hair Food. Okay, you know, that let's, stuff talk let's, let's talk about it. ProLine Hair stuff. Food. ProLine Hair Food. I like that stuff. Okay. And it's cheap. Yes. <laughs> and you can get it anywhere. Yes. And you know, use it in, in moderation. If you have really thick hair, you might want to use a little more. You know, use a little at a time and see how it how it is, how you feel about it and how it works for you. Okay. Thanks for calling. All right. Thanks, Wendy. Thanks for calling. Thanks. You're welcome. Guys. See, um, Christy, Christy is on line number three. She has long hair and she wants to keep it healthy and keep it uh, growing. Hi, Christy. Hi. Um, I'm calling because I have a question about hair. Okay. Yes. Okay. My question is this. Um, I have long hair, but um, number one, the end split, okay, and when I comb it or run my fingers through it or brush it, it breaks. Sometimes it's a lot, especially around perm time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I want to know um, a product or a technique that I can use to prevent the splitting, the breakage, and to keep it healthy and shiny and to make it grow a little longer. It's about where um, I'm about 5'4", five, 5'5", five, five, and my hair is about um, right above my bra strap. Okay, there's two things I can suggest to you. You can trim it regularly or pray a lot. No. <laughs> now I'm sorry. You need to trim your hair on a regular basis. Yeah, but they it. always cut my hair. You know, well, then you're going to the wrong people. You always do that at the salon. They always cut me. They always on. get me. We uh, ask for a half an inch and we come out three inches yes. shorter. We well, want to knife you. Then you have the wrong people because that's not me. And, I and, hope and, not. And if, I'll get you. And if your stylist takes off more than they discuss with you, then they're the wrong person for you. Oh. Because it, I, it, when before I touch your hair with the scissors, I will tell you what I'm taking off. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Christy. No, wait. What about the breakage? Oh, the, the breakage. breakage, baby, it comes from, you know, split ends and stuff. You know, you got to trim it on a regular basis. It's, if you're talking about breakage in the hairline, like in the front, like where it's thinning out, maybe if you relax your hair, maybe you're putting too much No, on. it's not that. It's, it's not? It's, the, it's actually the full length of my hair, but it, there's no roots attached. You need to trim it every two months. And the best way to do that is to trim it every time you get a relaxer so your maintenance oh, is... Yeah. Right on time. Yeah. Okay. And um, as suggested by you, Miss Wendy, um, I use VitaPoint. You know what? And I use VitaPoint. Now, Steve, I was going to ask you, <clears throat> what? And do you know that I use VitaPoint? Have I told you that? No, you haven't. It, do you? I, I, I don't care what you say because I like it. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you have to be defiant with Is your that like uh, a hair person. growth product. No, it's not. It's just a moisturizer. A light, light moisturizer. And it's very, very light. But you know the texture of my real uh-huh, hair. Uh huh. I use VitaPoint. What do you recommend for for thin hair, thick hair, and then coarse hair? So it's a moisturizer. 
It's a moisture. I mean, it keeps my is well, my I hair have, in good condition. Yes, my natural yes, hair. Yes, yes, very good. Listen, I haven't mm. used Vitapoint, so I can't tell you anything about something I haven't used. But it sounds an awful. Proline lot. is too hard for me. Okay, then what about Luster's Pink Moisturizer? Okay, I might be able to do that. that a little heavy. Mm-hmm. Okay, might it's be a little able- heavy. Yes, it is a little heavy. Damn. Okay, well then use a little less. Oh, how <laughs> dare you! <laughs> I'm, sorry. I'm sorry, I don't mean to be rude. Please. <laughs> uh, okay, what else? What other? Have you ever heard of bergamot? No. <laughs> little heavy. Yeah. Well, you know what? I like bergamot and I like Vita Point, but try his pink um Luster's pink. I mean, it's not mine. It's just it's one of those low end low end end products. Like mm-hmm. I said, if you come to the shop, we have a full line of very expensive stuff. High end I, stuff, fifty dollars for you shampoo. Know, and, and and usually what I do with the clients is give them a pamphlet and show them, you know, it it lays it out plain and clear exactly what uh, what you might need and for what de- different texture and everything. What I love thank you for calling. Okay, bye. Bye bye. Now we're going to talk about. Now I said you do hair and makeup, but you know what? Mm-hmm. Let's forgo the makeup and just talk about hair sure. because um, I want to address with you weaves and and bonding and all the all the okay. stuff having to do with fake hair. I also want to address where to get your hair, why it is that there's some places that are ripping us off when we go out and buy our real hair or buy our hair, and what it is about packaged hair that you need to know before you invest the money in a, a two minute weave because you know it sheds off. Mm. And um, I also wanted to talk about technique in attaching you know the, the different fake hair, hair situations sure. all right um so you guys keep it where you got it and you can feel free to call with your phone calls 866 get wendy and you know um i just happen to have steve up here because we always talk about hair and like that i'm not you know this is not necessarily an endorsement for you to either use steve or go to salon santa cruz or whatever but you know, I'm a girly girl, and I love talking about hair. <laughs> and so let's talk about it. It's hair during Advice Hour today on the Wendy Williams Experience and 107.5 WBLS. Wendy Williams! Microphone check, one, two, one, two. Wendy Williams Experience. 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 Alrighty, everybody, it's still Advice Hour, and it's the Wendy Williams Experience. Nina says, Wendy, ask Steve about locks. Mine are six years old, almost to my waist. Is it safe to color and care for them myself? Um, come to me, and we'll check you out. <laughs> I love locks. I think locks are absolutely wonderful. I wear lock extensions, and I only use real ones, you know. And, and what I... is a lock ex- Is that what you have in now? Yep, yep. Now, yep. what is a lock extension? Well, it's extensions that are locks. Okay. How yeah. do you attach them to your hair up there? You put the clips in like I we have clips in my hair? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. You, do you take them out at the end of the night is what I'm trying to say? Do you put your hair in a drawer like I do? <laughs> That's what I'm trying to figure out. Um, Sometimes. Sometimes I attach them for a couple of months, and sometimes oh. in between times I will snap on and snap Do you on. attach with uh, sewing, or do you attach with bonding glue? Oh, no, never bonding. Why? You know, some people, I don't want to turn anybody off. If, if you've been doing it and your hair is in good condition, then fine, you can keep doing it. But I've seen a lot of mishaps with bonding. Sometimes it's very difficult to get the glue out. It's almost, bonding is, well, the most normal sense of bonding, it's almost like eyelash glue. Yeah, so, uh, and I hate it because after, you know, you after... you try and comb that out and your comb gets messed up and, and your listen, hair gets pulled out and it's, there, it can be a challenge. There have been times because Steve does my hair and makeup for when I do stuff um, for, a lot of stuff for TV. Sometimes, like, I... I enjoy sometimes foregoing calling Steve and doing my own thing, and he gets disgusted, but you know that part of me is, oh, don't, please. But when you do a good job, don't I tell you? Yes. Well. Well, but this is what I'm going to say. <laughs> if I have like three days in a seven-day week where you put eyelashes on me, mm-hmm. they are my uh, natural lashes are so sparse afterwards. It really is. I like the analogy that you made with the hair bonding glue and the eyelashes because it's, it's true. It's almost the same stuff. It, you know, if you and if you run out of hair bonding glue and you use it on a regular basis, use your eyelash glue. Oh, interesting. <laughs> Let's go and to vice lo- versa. Line number six. T is there. She wants to know the best way to wear a wig without causing damage to her hair. Hello, Tia. How do you cause damage to your hair when you wear a wig? Um. I don't know. I mean... A lot of people think of wigs as being really, really for old and people. Some people. And some people's hair, you know, with age, sometimes people's hair gets thinner and gets... It's not... 
You know, I have a lot of customers that say, well, my hair used to be so much better 20 years ago. I was like, well, that was 20 years ago. Hello, that was before baby and and, <laughs> and age and, and, and all, all kinds stuff. of other stuff. I mean, if your hair is damaged, your hair is damaged. I mean, you got to do what you can to try and get it in, in, in a good condition. By the way, this is the, normally the segment of Advice Hour where I do the Wendy Williams People Poll. Um, from Friday, we left you with, do, do your children believe in Santa Claus? 40% of you said yes. 60% of you said no. Of course, it would be um, helpful to know how old the children are, you know, mm. but forty uh, percent of you all said yes. Today's people poll question: You can go to the Wendy Williams Experience dot com. Are you over the age of thirty and still living with your parents? Now, it could be because your parents are terminally sick or sick, or it could be because you're a bum. <laughs> or because you're saving for a house. Either way, we don't have room for, for the explanation. Just yes or no. Are you over the age of 30 and still living with your parents? Uh, a- a- answer honestly. We would love to know. Um, and you can go to my website, thewendywilliamsexperience.com. Steve Lindsay is here. Hi. Um, and he's talking hair. Let's talk about um, hair for, for weaving. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, you know, I enjoy going to... Lugos. Nice. Well, actually, you go to Lugos and and you know organize the hair for mm-hmm. me, and you enjoy going to Lugos too. Because if mm-hmm. you didn't, you would say otherwise. I've hung out with with Tony and Bev. They we've, we've gone out for dinner. They own the place, but yeah, let's let, let's be real. Time. There are other places. There's yes, adorable there hair mm-hmm. in Manhattan. Mm-hmm. Lugos, by the way, um, a lot of these places, you all, if they have a sample of your hair on file, and I don't care if you're listening from Miami, Florida. Oh, by the way, there's Lugos Extension over in Miami. But if you're listening in Cincinnati, for instance. If you send them a lock of your hair, the color and stuff, most of these big name places that actually mix the hair and put it on the weft to your custom colorage, they can FedEx it right to your house. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. There's also another place called um, Ounce by Ounce. It's on um, Adam Clayton Powell in New York um, at 136th and 137th. They do it also. And we're just starting to work with them to see to see what see kind of hair they have. Yep. Yeah, this is actually a new place that we've just discovered. Talk about the hair that you get in the package because people pay a lot to get a weave. They bring you the hair. It's in the package. Then what happens? Oh, boy. Okay. Um, how can I? <laughs> hair in the package <laughs> is really just bottom of the line. Line. It's factory done. It, it it looks good maybe when it's freshly done, but wash it once and see what happens. Shed, shed, shed. Well, not only that, but it looks like an old dog's hair. Matt, you know, it, Matt, look, Matt. it looks dry and. Lo- <laughs> yeah, but dry is natural. Well, I mean, I always tell you that you put too much gloss in my hair, and I say no, keep it dry like a dry brush fire. Dry is one thing, and healthy is another thing. Uh-huh. Your, the hair, the dead hair on your fur coat, shouldn't look better than the live hair on your head. Well, that's true. And whatever's supposed to look like it's a live hair on your head. Okay, you know. All right, line number six. Kiara wants to uh, cut her. I think she's gone. Okay, she hung up. Okay, um, let's go to. Mm. All right, well, Cindy, we'll have to talk to you next hour. She thinks her fiance is sleeping with her sister. Oh, my goodness. Okay. All right, this is from Rosa. Rosa says, I'm a Hispanic and I have curly hair. What products do you recommend I can use to have it look nice? Right now, it feels dry. She, um, as she says, and keep in mind, her scalp is oily. The texture of her hair is fine. Okay, um, and her hair is dry? Yeah, her her hair is dry, but her, her scalp, scalp is, is oily. oily. Mm-hmm. Well, then she might need trims. She might need um, conditioning treatments. It's really hard to say. I'm glad that, that she called in because I really want to stress that, you know, African-American hair, Caucasian hair, Oriental hair, obviously, and um, you know, black hair, it's, it's all different. And even in the different nationalities, there are different textures within that. So, you know, I have clients that come to my chair and say, well, you know, I'm black and she's black. Why can't I have her hair like hers? Well, mm-hmm. you may not have the same texture. Mm-hmm. I've seen I've seen African-American people with hair the same texture as Caucasian yeah. people. Yeah. So, you know, you you know, everybody's hair is different. And that's I'm glad she called. But the best thing I think you, sh- you could do is trim your hair regularly. Um, massage your scalp. Well, mm-hmm. you, you know, you have oily, oily scalp. So maybe if you massage your scalp, maybe some of the natural oils from your scalp, you can penetrate through your hair. Let me ask you about Oprah. Um, Oprah. Have we assessed uh, together or are we talking right now for the first time about Oprah? Because I think that Oprah wears a wig and pulls out part of the front, the curly hair. I, I know that she has a lot of nice great hair, mm-hmm. but I think that Oprah has resorted to wearing wigs, which many people have. What do you, what do you think? 
Well, I think you're right. Yeah. I think that, I think, but I think Oprah is kind of versatile because I think she has worn weaves. Yes. And I think that she's worn, well, uh, definitely in the, in the eighties, she was wearing her own hair. That's because, right. I mean, the way it moved mm -hmm. and, you know, you could, I, I don't know. I could just, I just felt that way. Yeah. And, um, I think she does both. A lot of celebrities do wear wigs because it's just easier. And Beyonce. Of, be, well, it, yeah. it, let's name them. Well, I think, I think a, a lot, a lot of them yeah. do. Yeah. I, I, probably I the most mostly, prominent one right now is uh, Tyra because every, she's on TV every day and people are always looking and you see her on America's Next Top Model and whatnot and you think that's her hair growing from her scalp and what you don't understand is is that that's a lace front well, wig it's, it's also, and they're not appropriate for in person. Those are appropriate for TV and pictures. So if you're John, you have Joan Q. Public, a lace front wig is not for you, Steve, you say? That's right. That's okay. right. Well, first of all, you know, because you can see the lace, and and Tara's hair is so light, you can't you can't be lightening African American hair that often, and and that would have to be done, especially the she way never it has in the front. roots. It exactly. would have to be done every week. Yeah, I mean, my she God. never has roots. She never has roots. All right, let me ask you this: just a general question for how you got involved in doing celebrity hair and makeup. Because I came along with you after you'd had a couple of these celebrity girls under your belt and everything. Mm. How did you get involved originally? And it's Steve Lindsay, everybody. Salon Hi. Santa Cruz, Cruz, New York City is where he works out of on Madison Avenue. The telephone number is 212-684-2386. Ask for Steve Lindsay. Book an appointment and he's fabulous. How did you get involved in hair and makeup? Because you just happened to, to me. Um, when I was younger, I had a very bad acne problem. It was cystic acne and I felt that I was the ugliest person in the world. And... I wanted to know how to make myself look better. Okay, so then we fast how. forward. You meet a celebrity, and then all of a sudden you're doing their hair and makeup. How did you get involved with that part? I run into folks, and they like me, and then we just work together. Where do you run into them? On the street? In the salons. I've worked at good places. See, that, that's the key then. If you want to do, you know, uh, a celebrity hair, you have to start, I guess, by going to salons where maybe a celebrity or two will go. Mm -hmm. And then you have a nice met because you and I, I, I wasn't your your girl in the very beginning, mm -hmm. but you would always come in and call me Jessica Rabbit, <laughs> and I must the admit cartoon, the cartoon. And I must admit that you know whether he was lying or not, he was very charming. And then one day I just said, "Hey," and it's been th that way ever since. So give it up for Steve Lindsay. Steve, thanks for coming by. Thank you. And um. Everybody keep it here. We're going to gossip about all things relevant coming up next hour. Keep it here. Thank you, Wendy. It's Wendy, man. I have a girl, right, for 10 years. Like half of it. I've been in jail like five years. I come home recently, right, and I come to find out now she's dealing with women. I don't have no problem with that. You know what I mean? As long as you can be in on it. Live WBLS, New York. As you regular listeners know, from time to time, we have special guests here in the studio. Y'all, what's up? This is Charlie Wilson. This is A. Marie. What's up, what's up? This is Eric Benet. What's up? This is Shanice. Yo, what's up? This is your boy, M.H. Marcus Houston, and you're listening to my girl, the beautiful Miss Wendy Williams. The Wendy Williams Experience. Holla at your boy. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Wendy Williams and Mary J. Blige. What more can I say? I'm always... Wendy Williams, you don't know me. I'm not your punching bag. You gon' blow me up. Girl, better leave me alone before I buy your radio station and send you home. Wendy Williams, experience, 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 experience. All righty, everybody. The Wendy Williams experience is on the radio. Dons and Divas Extravaganza is heating up December 22nd, New York City. Open bar all night long, hosted by Mary J. Blige. Tons of celebrities coming through. This is our sixth time throwing a party called the Dons and Divas Extravaganza. Many of you have already been to extravaganzas in the past with Usher and Little Kim and uh, Lisa Ray and um, Sierra, who performed last year. Um, Shout out to my girl, Keisha Cole, who's come through and performed before. I mean, these parties are just the big, big, big upscale events. Upscale. We are blowing the roof off. Shout out to Question Mark Entertainment and Face Down Entertainment. If by chance you all um, from outside of the New York metro area are going to be in New York City for December 22nd and you would like to attend... Um, do what everybody else is doing. Um, and obviously you can't run around from borough to bro borough, you know, Brooklyn or the Bronx and stuff getting tickets. But you can go to PayPal.com and hit the button and, and, and get your passes. You can go to Don's and Divas 2005 at Yahoo.com. Spell out the word and. 
and hit the button and get your tickets that way. Um, shout out to everybody who happens to be in the Philly, Delaware area. You all can always jump on the phone at 302 um, I want to shout out to my people in Brooklyn, Ellen John's Barbershop. The tickets are going crazy over there. 718-385-0440. Um, and it's just going to be... And don't forget the theme of the party as far as dress code, black. Nothing but black in the room. If you want to stand out, then do it through your accessories and your hair and, and your attitude. Okay? Um, this is strictly for the mature crowd. Um... You know, if if you think that this is your typical um, party, well, it's not. And, and maybe this party is not for you. I love you listening. But, you know, the Dons and Divas extravaganzas are always something, something else. You know, it's always on some next. And it's going to be in Manhattan at a secret location. Wendy's Fun House for the evening. Ice sculptors, catered food, walking all through the party. Open bar. All through the party. All through the party. Um, you, I, I would hope that I'd see you on December 22nd. Now, Jesse Vault, my um, tranny friend, who's got a fabulous website, um, was not able to come in today. But I do want to give you Jesse's website. Uh, I have to tell you something. When we regular women think of tranny gear... We think of something way over the top that we can't possibly want to put on our feet. Particularly, I'm talking about the shoes now, particularly. But if you're like me and your shoes are, you must wear a size 11 or a size 12. Hell, sometimes even we regular women wear a size 13. But we like a big feminine shoe. We don't necessarily like something like uh, RuPaul would wear. We want something that we can go to court or a luncheon or church in. And then there are others of us, because I love love a whole variety of shoes. I love tranny-looking shoes, and I also oh. love courtroom-looking shoes, if you know what I'm saying. And I'll tell you, this website, I'm about to give it to you, trannygear.com. Trannygear.com. It's Jesse Volt's website. Jesse does a wonderful job with this website, and I love the selection of shoes and other gear going on. So, trannygear.com. Hey, friend to the show, Dennis Rodman. So, I'm reading in today's newspaper that he was kicked out of a club here in New York because he jumped on stage during a sold out set by DJ Testo. So, Dennis jumps on the stage, rips off his shirt, pulls down his pants, exposes his behind, and Jesse. Excuse me, and, and the DJ Testo got disgusted and he stormed off. So Dennis chased after him, screaming that he was sorry uh, and for him to come back on stage. A spokesperson confirmed that, that Dennis was escorted out of the room when Jesse refused to hit the turntables until Dennis was kicked out. Yeah. <laughs> so the person who does the talking for Dennis says... They did not throw him out. I swear. We walked on stage. The DJ stopped playing. The crowd was screaming, Rodman, Rodman. The DJ did refuse to come back on, although, so that part is true. He must have been paid, I guess, but the crowd loved Dennis. Oh, excuse me, not paid, but uh, PO'd. <laughs> then you can't say PO'd in the newspaper. They had to say P, then dash, 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 and then D. Wow, is the FCC cracking down like that? Oh my goodness. So, Dave Chappelle's coming back to Comedy Central. Okay, let me preface this by saying, kind of, sort of. Well, here's the deal. Apparently, there are these sort of basement tapes. In other words, tapes that, you know, were zhuzhed up from Comedy Central. They're deciding to air them. It's four episodes worth of sketches that Dave filmed before he decided to leave Comedy Central. And this is all announced earlier today. Um, and these shows are going to premiere weekly, uh, April, May, and June of 2006. Uh, six. They're never before seen shows with never before seen footage. And um, no, he's not back in the good graces of Comedy Central, but apparently Comedy Central owns these tapes, so they're going to play them whether Dave likes it or not. So, you know. I saw the Boondocks last night. It's my second time actually seeing the show. I, mean, I like that show. I don't make it must see TV, but I'm glad that it's on. You know what I mean? Oh, Another website, by the way, shout out to the Bigfoot Girls. I have not even been to this one myself. Taryn, do you, can you go on this website? I just want to take a look at what they have. It's called Barefoot Contest, excuse me, Barefoot Test. Barefoot is one word, then T E 
S-S, barefoottest.com. They cater to women with big feet. They've got everything from ballet flats to wedges to stilettos. Designers like Jeffrey Campbell, Lulu Guinness, trendy, stylish designers. They go all the way up to a size 13. And for you ladies with those small little tiny ballerina feet, they happen to have your size, too, from size 4 to size 13. Ladies, this is your foot website, barefoottests.com. They also have Roberta Cavalli and Sacco, and they do, they have all kinds of shoes, is what they say. They say Paris Hilton enjoys going to this website as well. And I see some shoes here, uh, some great T-straps in this magazine. Um, two hundred and eighty dollars. I see other shoes from two twenty to nine hundred dollars. So this is really the upscale diva. Go to barefoottest.com. dot com, and Taryn just freeze that once you pull it up because then I want to take a look. Um, as soon as we close the mic for the break. Okay. Shout out to all the pregnant ladies. Congratulations to you. I've got um, a couple of websites for you guys to go to. You know, Jolie Fisher. From our show, Desperate Housewives, is currently pregnant. And she did some recommending through a magazine, In Style magazine, I think it is. Anyway, she loves, um, let's see, are these websites? Jeez, none of these places are websites. Oh, never mind. I'm sorry, pregnant ladies. Well, you know what? Pick up the new Life in Style magazine and see what Jolie Fisher's talking about. These clothes are actually very cute. Everything from long holiday dresses to really cute T-shirts with really cute phrases. So if you'd like to go, um, go ahead. Okay. Let's talk about Mike Jones, platinum artist, all-around good guy. He's making his um, acting debut tonight on Prison Break, or was that last Monday night? I don't know. I don't watch that show. Not because I hate, just because I don't. Apparently... Um, oh, wait, he was on last week. It was the cliffhanging episode, and it got great ratings. They say 12.1 million viewers tuned in last Monday, bringing Prison Break to the number one slot. And Mike Jones will be returning to Prison Break when the series continues in 2006. So Mike Jones, fabulous, terrific, terrific. I wanted to talk with you about the celebrity wines um, also in this hour. But first, let's talk about Jay-Z. Now, with all the stuff that he has going on, you know that he has silently been working for over a year on his autobiography with um, the noted writer Dream Hampton. You might have heard of Dream. Um, sidebar. When Dream works with somebody, Dream, you have a reputation that if it's a man, then... I'm not saying a thing. All I'm saying is, you know, Dream, you have a little reputation along with your writing projects. Mm -hmm. um, so Jay-Z has confirmed that he's pulled plans on releasing his autobiography because he feels uncomfortable about his fans knowing all about his past. You know, he likes to be in control of the information that gets put out there. Of course, you can help what the gossip world is going to say, but you can certainly help what you put out there on your own. Now, this book, The Black Book, was actually supposed to be released. It just got pushed back so much in time with the Black Album. So now the Black Book is ready, but Jay-Z is nervous about putting it on bookshelves after admitting his struggles as he and Dream wrote the book and then actually reading his own manuscript, he said, no, I can't put this out here. Here's his quote. When I really got the manuscript, just someone having your life in their hands made me like, I ain't doing this. I can't read it, by the way, he says. She, meaning Dream Hampton, was sending me chapters, but I haven't read it all I can't. So what he's saying is that he's pulling the plug on the project. What I believe is, is that maybe he's trying to judge up curiosity about what he has in the book. Although he really doesn't need to do that. He's got a built-in fan base. And it's not like he needs book money. I mean, unless, you know, his ego says that anything that I touch, I want to touch well. If I put a book out, it's got to be a New York Times bestseller. I mean, you know, he's a driven man. He could very well be saying, I'm not going to just put any book out there. Like, 50 put his book out there. It's not a New York Times bestseller. Mm -hmm. 
not that that's a big deal, but. For somebody that's driven, that wants to do the best at everything, like no CD without it being platinum, no book without it being a bestseller, you know, no no TV without top ratings, he might be trying to judge up a little bit of action. I don't know. I don't know. We'll be following it. Um, they say that Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie um, could possibly be too close for comfort, and this is making, excuse me, Brad Pitt and Jennifer Aniston could possibly be too close for comfort now. And this is supposedly making Angelina Jolie really jealous. Um, They say on November 19th that Angelina and Brad made a public appearance together um, at the opening night of the Muhammad Ali Center in Louisville, Kentucky. By the way, May May Ali is supposed to be calling this hour, so hopefully she'll call by the next great break. But it was apparently a very carefully staged meet and greet. And according to what I was reading in the New York Daily News, Jennifer Aniston was seriously considering attending the Muhammad Ali Center opening event with her new boyfriend, Vince Vaughn. And as I've told you, and as you probably read and heard and everything, Brad and Jennifer are back to being civil and talking. I don't believe this relationship with Vince Vaughn is anything more than just, that is her go-to man, Jennifer Aniston, to get her over it. Um, people are also saying that um, Angelina Jolie has got such a sexual repertoire that she could possibly now be starting to get bored by Brad Pitt. And that's not wow. saying that he's a dead lay, but just wow. to say, you know, for a wow. woman who walks around with vial of blood around her neck from her previous, you know, you know, she's. I have no doubt in my mind she doesn't just push her hair back like in my mind Beyonce and Mariah Carey. You know, this woman is about action in the bedroom. And it probably takes a multitude of men to satisfy her. I don't know. That's in my mind. So, look, I'll be taking your telephone calls. May May Ali will be calling. I still wanted to talk with you about wine and Lindsay Lohan and um, the events going on out there in the world. So keep it here, okay? Thanks, everybody. It's windy, man. I've been talking to this young lady. She called me at home. I was listening to your show. And she um, says that she doesn't know any straight guys that listen to the Wendy Williams show. No. Plenty of straight guys listen to the show. All right. So, yeah. Ow. So what should I tell her? Just it, Tell her how you do it. The Wendy Williams Experience. 107.5 WBLS invited our listening audience to get into the spirit of the holidays. And you did. With the foods for the hurricane victims and um, the clothing and things like that. We're joining in with WBLS to make a change in life. They're definitely doing it up in the neighborhood. You know, and I appreciate them doing that. Thanks to all those who turned out to make their donations, money, housing, services, plus food, toys, coats, shoes, and so much more. Special thanks to Krispy Kremes, r k Limousine, and Foot Locker. The WBLS spirit of giving continues. If you know a family in need. Send a letter to WBLS Spirit of the Holidays, 3 Park Avenue, 41st Floor, New York, New York, 10016. No later than Monday, December 12th. As we continue to help those who really need help at this time. 107.5 WBLS, today's R&B and Classic Soul. Yeah, you know, I just um, was looking at the website, (laughs) barefoottest.com. I mean, you know, if you love flat shoes, there's something there for you. If uh, you love cowboy boots, I saw a few of them. If what you love is a stiletto just in a size 11, 12, or 13, forget about it. You're not going to see what you want there. Damn. I have another website, though. Tamron, I'm going to circle it for you. Okay. It's um, XTC shoes.com small x small t small c shoes.com they have custom made shoes that they run from from 220 to 900 bucks xt shoes.com whoa that's my kind of shoe <laughs> see what i'm saying immediately the website comes up wow okay hold that one taryn i want to look at that as soon as i close the microphone okay wow all right so anyway it's the Wendy Williams Experience right now, everybody, and we're here until 7 o'clock. I have something for you to win that you're going to really love. Even if you don't go, this is what you do. It's for the color of Generations Night at the color purple. Okay. Now, this night is going to be a night that I'm hosting. It's going to be at the theater, and it's going to be a reception before the show over at B. Smith's. Yes. B. 
Barbara Smith, you know, B. Smith, used to be a model. Now she's like a black version of like Martha Stewart. She's got her stuff in Bed Bath & Beyond. And um, she's fabulous. Okay, so the pre-show reception is going to be at B. Smith's. And then we'll all go to the theater. So I'll see you for drinks and then the, a color purple. Now here's the deal. Caller number 10 right now is going to win a family four-pack of tickets. I can tell you right now, this evening is happening on... Well, geez, it's after I get back from vacation. I'm going on vacation in January. I think it's like January 12th, 13th, 14th, something like that. You'll find out more when you win. I don't have anything in front of me pertaining to... But this is in January. And I can also let you know that... Um, is it in January? Yeah, it's in January. So you can give these tickets like a family four packs. So you keep two for yourself and give a pair away to, you know, your friend for Christmas. This is a great Christmas gift. This color purple is getting rave reviews. My parents went last week. They just are still talking. Everybody's still talking about it. So caller number 10 wins that on the phone right now. Is Debbie still in the other room? Yes. Okay. So Debbie's got, uh, I got the contest. And by the way, the Wendy Williams people poll question for Friday was, do your children believe in Santa Claus? 40% of you said no. 60% said yes. And the new people poll question at thewendywilliamsexperience.com is, are you over 30 years old and living with your parents? Be honest, okay? Be honest. And we will address that tomorrow. And um, and that's at thewendywilliamsexperience.com. It's a simple yes or no. So, um, let me see line number six. What is Cece talking about? She has a question about going to the bathroom. Oh, boy. Hey, Cece. Hi, Wendy. All right, so what's going on? I just want to know what's up. I got unwritten rule or protocol with that type of stuff. I know when I go in the store, it's embarrassing. People are constantly spraying, so I flush as I go. But I don't know if it really matters if I spray or not. Because when men go, they don't care. It's like a bomb will hit the place and they still will just smell it and take it. Yeah, you're talking about in the store? Cause no, at work. Well, here's my opinion of that. My opinion is, is that at some point or another, all the ladies that you worked with have dropped bombs in the bathroom. Whether it's an emergency, they might not intend it, maybe they had something bad for lunch. I don't much worry about it. My general rule of thumb is that if it's coworkers, we're all in this together, so, you know. Because they always it seem like they try to look through the crack. They're really juvenile about it to see who's in there and yeah. look at the shoes. I don't, yeah, I, <laughs> I don't even bother with that. As a matter of fact, when I'm in the bathroom, if by chance there's an emergency going on, because I try to hold that part of going to the bathroom until I get home, yeah. but I will actually shout out to the person who just walked in, like, I hope you got a book of matches, because I'm in here laying it out. Or, you know how sometimes somebody's in the stall next to you and they're going and all you hear is a tinkle, tinkle, but then you go and you hear all kind of splashing and stuff. Yeah, yeah you, you just pray for somebody to turn on the water for us to no. drown it out. I just shout out to the next stall. Um, Susie, uh, I don't know what I ate earlier, but I'm about to let the bathroom have it. Now, as a general rule of thumb, I say at work, everything goes. And and if you're like at a um, at a party at somebody's house, try not to have one of those X lax mo moments. moments. Okay. And if you're at a place where you don't know the people who are using the bathroom after you, say you have to run into a Starbucks and use the bathroom or whatever, then who cares what they think? Because I remember a long time ago you were talking about this. You said you were in there with, this is at your house, with the fans were blowing and you had the strain and your mascara was going like it was out of style and you were cramping and moaning. Yeah. <laughs> but at my house, you know, who cares? Yeah. You know what I mean? If I go to somebody else's house, listen, I've called off things when, when you know, the number two has been in a bad situation. <laughs> I've called it off. Like, there's no way I can go out tonight. There's no way I can go to somebody else's house, you know, and, and go through this. I want to try that diet you want to do. Yeah. But I'm really scared because at work, I sometimes have to go out and feel the sign my job. There's no way Same. I could be out in the streets and do that. There's a whole bathroom thing going along with the Master Cleanse diet. But, Cece, I want to thank you for calling. Thanks Ta so take much, care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Mm-hmm. Um, hello? Oh, wait. No, we don't have to go to the telephone. Actually, um, you know what? We can continue with the break. Yeah.
And then we'll be back. Uh, we have May May Ali. As a matter of fact, that might have been her just calling and we didn't answer the phone. So um, May May Ali is going to be calling. You know, she's got a project happening on Lifetime. She's going to tell us about that. I'll ask her about her father and her sister's divorce. Okay, so it's May May Ali in our next break. It's the Wendy Williams Experience non-top, nonstop till 7 o'clock on 107.5 WBLS. Take it back, baby. Take it back. School short shot. Yes. The rhythm, the ripple. Two, three, play. A little play from back in the day. And me is Wendy Man. Wendy Williams. The Wendy Williams experience. 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 What up, what up, y'all? You know who it is. Your boy, Jay the Kiss. The kiss of death. And you listening to the Wendy Williams experience. What's up, man? Wow. This is the greatest show on earth. Wendy Williams experience. Yeah, you know what? My coworker, Scott said that he's not doing master cleanse until after all the food from the holidays. You know, like in the first week in January, he's going to start that master cleanse diet. I, you know, I agree. I said it earlier. I'm doing it. I'm just going to wait. Um, I have a Jennifer Lopez spotting from one of my interns, Arabia, who said that um, Jennifer was on West 32nd Street between 6th and 7th Avenue. She's right now down there taping for a new film. She's in front of Jack's 99 cent store. So, and there's a big crowd all around and Shout out to Jenny on the block, taping. Happy holidays, everybody. Mm, dear Wendy, I saw Free from 106 and Park. She hosted the Music Mill in, in, in Indianapolis on November 25th. Her stomach is as flat as a board, so the rumors are false. Well, please, for Beyonce's sake, please let it be. By the way, I love the Walmart commercial. Yeah. I fall for it, hook, line, and sinker. And you know what? The baby just smacks the ball home. The baby is adorable. Solange's baby. Um, and then this person says, P.S. Any word on Keith Sweat Guy and Belle Biv DeVoe's concert in Philly? Yeah, I do have word, as a matter of fact. Um, Sharon lives in Delaware and says that um, uh, she says a bunch of things, including Casey took off his shirt, exposed his bird chest. And the crowd didn't care. Johnny Gill sounded so good. And Johnny also commented on the rumors surrounding he and Keith Sweat. He said, don't believe everything you hear or read in the tabloids. And thanks for showing love and giving support. Yada, yada, yada. Hey, you know what? Oh. Actually, I'm going to be hosting this show um, the weekend of, let me think, think, think. Oh, January 5th. I don't know whether that's a week or weekend. At the Trump. Shout out to Electric Factory Concerts. Um January 5th at the Trump in Atlantic City. It's Keith Sweat, Belle Biv DeVoe. It's, um... Boy, who else is it supposed to be on the show? Mm. Whoever you've been seeing on the show, that's who's going to be there. And January 15th, if you're interested in going, if you call what's all going on at the Trump, they'll tell you who's there, and, and I'll be hosting that show, so hopefully I'll see you all there. Um, but May May Ali is on the telephone, and um, hello? Hey. Hey, May May. Hi. It's Wendy. Do you remember coming to my radio show in New oh, York? Do I remember? <laughs> Man, I mean, I, I still thank you for that. I have a fun time. I'm so sorry I couldn't be in there this time. You know what? We really did have a good time with you, and I want to tell you that I really enjoyed it, and I've had your sister in before also. Um, I enjoyed you very much. So now, before we get off track, talk to us about your Lifetime project. Well, the life, it's a Lifetime special airing tomorrow, December 6th at 8 p.m. called Earth Angels, and it's a feel-good reality show with an edge to it. Um, the Earth Angel team on the show is rewarding a person that has no idea that she's being rewarded. Wow. But what's different about the show is that we're setting up these schemes and pulling pranks on her behind the scenes. And it's a lot of hidden cameras and deception, mm. but it's all for a good cause in the end. So she gets a big payoff at the end. It's, it's real interesting. Now, this is a one-time um, thing on Lifetime, or are you going to be doing other projects with them as well? For now, it's it's a it's a special, so it, there's a chance to get can get picked up as a series. But right now, it's their Christmas special. How did you get involved? 
You know, it was a referral. I work a lot in the community, and um, it's kind of community-oriented, this mm-hmm. show, because mm-hmm. we're helping a humanitarian in the community that deserves mm-hmm. all this stuff, mm-hmm. but it's kind of edgy. So someone just kind of referred me over and auditioned for it, not really knowing what, what it was exactly, and I end up posting it. So wow. I was just honored to be a part of it because it's... I mean, this is good. It's yeah. really good. Uh, yeah, and exposure, too, you know? Yeah, you so, know. So how's, how's your sister doing? How's Layla doing? Layla's good. good. Everyone knows she's going through her divorce. She had that in Jet Magazine, of course. And can we just say that it, she's not with um, Queen Latifah? Because, you know, oh, that's... no. <laughs> no, no, Layla's not. You know, if Layla were a lesbian, she would be the type that would be out yeah. of the closet. She yeah. wouldn't be in because she's very, like in your face and just you know she, she lives a real real life but yeah. no she's not I think that rumor kind of leaked from somebody to kind of mess up her career I guess yeah but yeah it's no her and Queen Latifah aren't dating the first rumor was Queen Latifah was my sister back in 89 oh I never heard that wow so now they're trying to make her my sister-in-law but no that's not happening Wait, do you think <laughs> do you think it could possibly be the soon-to-be ex-husband who leaked it? It could be, I guess. It is, I'm not close with her ex-husband. Hopefully he wouldn't do anything like that. Is she is she worried about having to pay alimony to him? You know what? I would be, so yeah. I guess she is too. I'm sure she's trying to, you know, I don't know all the details yeah. of her stuff. She's kind of private, but, so, you know, divorce is, divorce is hard for women with money. Heck yeah. And so, all right, we're moving towards Christmas, but how was Thanksgiving for the Ali family? How did you spend Thanksgiving? Well, I spent it resting and sleeping all day because most of my family's in Chicago. And also, so, you're, you guys are Jehovah's Witness, so you wouldn't be celebrating Christmas. No, we're Muslim. Muslim. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So, no, we, you know, we, we celebrate Thanksgiving. Usually when I'm at home in Chicago, we have a big Thanksgiving dinner. We respect all the other holidays. Yeah. I have a lot of Christian friends and stuff like that. Yeah. Now, how's your dad? He's good. Good. He's real good, actually. That's nice to hear because you know we were yeah, hearing some rumors about exactly him. Him with him talking to him, and he's doing fine. Great. He had a simple back surgery, uh, neck surgery, and it ended up being he was dying. So uh. that was I had friends calling me crying. I'm like, my father's fine. Yeah, yeah. So how's your love life? What are you all up to? You know, <laughs> you know I can't. You know, I'm not interested. I don't see anybody worth the time. Yeah. You know, I'm very particular. Yeah. I am. I'm so just, is you know, it is it like a big deal to you? Because I get women all the time who say, you know, I'm alone for the holidays. And I always say, look, just hold your breath. It'll be over before you know it. And don't try to be desperate just to kiss somebody on New Year's Eve. You know, I'm not that way. I kind of grew up with a pretty strict Muslim lifestyle. I didn't mm-hmm. have boyfriends most of my life. Yeah. And I was married and I liked married life. So I'm just not a dater type person unless I really like the person. Now, wait, and- are you still married? No, okay. I, I was divorced. I got married in 95 and divorced in 97. I've been divorced for eight years. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's but I've just learned to just appreciate me. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. If someone comes along, it's nice, fine. If not, that's fine, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Any any other projects on the horizon besides this project tomorrow night on Lifetime that we should know about? Right now, just this one, Earth Angels, is tomorrow at 8 p.m. on Lifetime Channel, and it is very good. All right. Thank you. I wouldn't be on the phone with you. Well, thank you. And listen, May May, next time you come to Newark, you've got to come by. I, I, you know what? I won't go to New York without stopping by. I'll definitely come. Thank you, May May. Thank you so much for your support, Wendy. Happy holiday. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Isn't she great? That's Mei Mei Ali. Yeah, she used to rap. <laughs> and um, she gave us a freestyle, which is somewhere lost in the archives of the show. We'll find it one day and play it for you. Very funny. We used to play it on the radio. A lot of fun. Is there anybody on hold there? Uh, Foxy Brown, by the way, they say is almost totally deaf. I want to address that next hour. You know what? She's kept up this charade, if that's what it is, for a long time. I, I believe that there's something to this. You know, and I've never absolutely discounted her just because I always, my feeling is there are a million things for people to lie about. You don't need to lie about like your kids being sick and that's why you're not at work or, you know, that, that you're going totally deaf to get attention because little Kim is going to jail, you know, or was going to jail at the time. I just, she's been keeping this up for too long. Shout out to you, Foxy Brown. Shout out to you, Foxy Brown. We'll talk about it next hour. Keep it where you got it.
windy, man. You never met me. You don't know me. You ain't been in my house. You don't live with me. You don't sleep with me. You don't do shit with me, but talk about me. Watch what you say. That's all, baby girl. That's all I'm asking you is watch what the you say. The Wendy Williams Experience. Yo, did you catch this flashback? I got the perfect screwed music. Let's start it off regular speed. Oh. oh. <laughs> oh, the party's popping. And we're down south right now because that's where that screw music is big. Shout out to DJ Screw and all the whole screw elation down there. All right. Mm. Let me take a little something and get in the zone. Hit it. I'm just taking something. I don't know what they take to get into the zone. But, um, oh. 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 Yeah. All right. Yo, was the man here with any more of that? Mm. I climbed out my bedroom. My mama don't even know I'm at this party. Mm. Give me some Visine. Oh, I forgot. This is not the Visine effect. She just wonders why I'm so slow. I just tell her I'm tired. All she keeps asking me is if I'm pregnant. She's so out of touch. Did you ask me how old my mom is? How old is your 37. Oh, saying you got to get with it moms and dads These kids are on to something this is how they party just like this dipping it low oh you got it. this is it right here <laughs> miss a day miss a whole lot coming through your speakers boy it's windy man <laughs> 107.5 wbls new york she's a mother hey mommy happy so good can sew, a little cooking. She's a singer. Struggle, in and out, ups and downs. Uh, Put that like, where? Whoa, back whoa. there. She drops it like it's hot. Brown juice in one hand and get right in the other. She has Tourette's moments. Although I do have to be honest with you, the last time that I went, um, Dame Dash. What did that have to do with anything? She spazzes out. No, you didn't tear up your 40 something year old body. No! She's gangster. Anybody who tries to get in the way is going to get rolled over. She's a queen of all media. Wendy Williams. Yeah, baby. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Engineer, please, some music. Would you please, would you give us a record, por favor? Merry Christmas, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ow. <laughs> Have you had any eggnog this holiday season? It just seems like the popularity of eggnog has fallen off, or maybe that's just me, because um, nobody in my house drinks it. I don't, I've never had an appreciation for eggnog, eggnog ice cream, eggnog milkshakes, nothing. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, about Foxy Brown, I, I do want to let you know. Hey, what's up, Kevin Lyles? I see you listening. All right. You know, he came up to the show a few weeks ago to promote his book and stuff. And big record executive over at Atlantic Records. So about Foxy Brown, they say she's almost totally deaf. This is according to her lawyer from earlier today. Her lawyer's name is Joseph uh, Tecapena. And he's disclosed that Foxy has this hearing problem. Um, it all started to kind of come out when she was in Manhattan criminal court. Um back in September and she was um, passing notes back and forth to him obviously straining to hear certain questions and whatnot. So then it kind of had to come out. Well, you know, then she also revealed to us um, a few months ago that she was going to be undergoing some sort of hearing operation to correct her hearing. Um, they say that um, this is what her attorney says. Here's his quote. She's pretty much totally deaf now. She can't hear me. We have to write things back and forth. Anything I have to communicate with her now is written. Um, meanwhile, 
there's a judge by the name of Melissa Jackson who adjourned Foxy's um, case that she's dealing with now until December 23rd. Her attorney is expected um, to have everything resolved. Um, Fox, you know, is charged with misdemeanor assault. She, oh, and also attempted harassment. Um, she's already rejected two misdemeanor pleas. So, in other words, she wants to take this to the wall, this particular case relating back to August of 2004 when two nail salon workers say that Foxy fought them over payment for a manicure in a Manhattan salon. Um, Foxy feels like she's innocent and she's being railroaded. In the meantime, she still is working for the release of her CD, Black Rose. They say it's expected to release soon. She's Like I said, uh, she's going back to court on December 23rd relating to the nail salon. Um, it, is Foxy still looking for attention because of the delayed release date of her CD? Is she still looking for attention and the sympathy vote, vote because Kim is in jail? Um, I don't, I don't know. I mean, you know, playing with the loss of one of your senses is, it's not like talking about you have a cold. I don't know. You know, I'm falling for it. If that's the case, I'm falling for it. So, you know, shout out to you, Foxy. And I'm sorry to hear about the loss of your hearing. Um... And I hope that the operation, you know, reverses it and whatnot. Um, so we have some people on hold. Um, line number six doesn't want to leave a name. But hello? Yes. Hi, is this you? You found a message in your husband's phone from another man? Actually, yes. From our, it's, it's actually from a student. My husband works at college. Uh -huh. And um, I wouldn't say student because he's not a professor, but it's from a younger man. Yeah. Okay. And so what did the message say? The message said... Um, <laughs> I like guys. <laughs> he said, the message said, babe, I'm on the bus. I can't talk right now. Um, but when I get off the bus, as soon as I get off the bus, I'm going to call you no matter how late it is. I miss you. I love you. Oh, now, what? Now, this is a kid that he recruited, you know, and I don't... Recruited? You know, I, don't, I don't think that my husband is gay or anything like that, but I had to... Ha like, you know, take a second guess because I'm like, wait a minute, what the hell? You know? Well, okay. What do you mean recruited? Because your husband, you said, is uh, what'd you say? Your husband does teach college. No, he you said one of his students, right? Yes. Okay. What, what student? Where? Like, what type of uh, learning inst institution? University. Okay. And recruited, as in, you know, come get an education. No basketball. Oh, a basketball recruit. Uh -huh. Well, I do have to say, are you sure that the, the, the student said, "I love you"? Yes. Okay, listen. Okay, I get a lot of Case phone closed. calls from parents and everybody because, I mean, he's really awesome with the kids. Yeah. My thing is, you know, why wouldn't you address this? He feels like, he's like, well, you know, this is the second time that you blew up because, you know, you feel like I should handle things a certain way mm -hmm. and I have no control over what people, you know, send me or say to me or give me. And I'm like, yes, you do have, some, you may not have any control over it, but you say something, you do something. So he's basically saying that I blew the situation up. How, uh, how did you approach your husband about this? Because you said you found the message. Okay. You were snooping? Yeah, because I, you know, well, we all yeah. snooped through the phone, sure. whatever, whatever. So I was through his phone. And I was like, you know, um, there was a message in your phone. You know, and it kind of disturbed me. And he was like, what message? And I told him, and he looked, and he was like, okay. He's like, yeah, I thought this was kind of bizarre, too. And I was like, well, what did you do about it? And he's like, I didn't do anything about it. You know, the kid hasn't called me back. I didn't do anything. And I'm like, what do you mean you didn't do anything? I'm like, so is this okay? I feel like, you know, it's totally inappropriate because you are like his superior. You know okay. what I mean? 866 get Wendy. I'm just going to pick up the phone off the fly. I would like to know what you all feel. Uh, for me, I'd be hitting the ceiling. On a scale of 1 to 10, this would be an 11 in my marriage. And and uh, and the thing I'd be wondering is is how long have they been lovers? Or or when will they finally fall into each other's arms and sleep together? And how long have you been curious about another man to my husband? I love you? Is that is it wrong for me to think that way? Is that small-minded? That's what I'm saying, Wendy. And he's saying that I totally blew it out of the No, you didn't. Thing. No, you know. didn't. No, you didn't. I don't know. And this is like, you know, this, I did this. This was Thanksgiving weekend, uh -huh. and I was like, um, it's Christmas, and he's, I don't know. I don't know. You know, he's saying that, I, no, I don't like men, or okay. no, you know, recruited, whatever. Okay, recruited for basketball. If, is your husband a part of the basketball organization, or is he simply a teacher at the school, and he helps recruit on the side? No, he, that's, that's his job. He, he's, he's a coach. 
Oh, okay. well, okay. Yeah. Now we're getting somewhere. Mm-hmm. Hmm, I love you, even to a coach. I don't know. I mean, you know what? If the kid was on the on, you know, the Tallahassee Bridge about to jump and maybe your husband's talked him down, but you would have heard about some sort of drama like that in your house. I tend to go with the homo thing. Uh, yeah. Call it call it close minded. But you, text message, just like you're way too comfortable. With uh, yeah, you're way too comfortable. Hello. Let's go. All right. Let me get off the telephone with you and find out what other people say. OK. OK. Thank you. By the way, shout out to everybody at Sony. I'm sorry to hear this holiday season that they are offering early retirement to workers as a part of a plan to cut 10,000 positions worldwide, including the consumer electronics and the entertainment company, which would be like Sony Music and stuff. Um, sucks. All right. Uh, hello. Hello. Oops. Hello. Hi, it's Wendy. Hello. Hello. Hi, it's Wendy. Hi, Wendy. How are you today? Hi. Did you hear that lady? Yes. I think that she's a total fool. Apparently, she's in denial because, A, she's searching the phone, so evidently something is going on. Well, something's gone wrong. Well, well, let me just ask you this. Do you believe that that message was inappropriate from a student to a recruiter and with the I love you at the end? I believe it's inappropriate, A, from any student to professor. Mm -hmm. If it's a student who is underneath the influence of a coach and leaving messages like that, Mm -hmm. he should have definitely done something. Do you think there's a possibility that they could be lovers, future lovers, past lovers, or just inappropriate in general? It's inappropriate, and they're definitely gay. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Well, thank you for calling. Have a great day. Take care. I just want to ask somebody else, too. Hello. Hi, it's Wendy. Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? I was just asking people, what do you think about that woman who just called? Is that inappropriate? Very. Do you think they're gay? I believe there's something going on. Is it something that makes you uncomfortable? Yes. If you were the wife, yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I'm Thanks okay. for calling. Thanks, Wendy. You take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Um, oh, he- hi. Hello. Hi. It's Wendy. Hi, Wendy. How are you? Hey, I'm doing well. What's going on? Oh, nothing. I had a question I wanted to ask you about the Christmas contest that they were having on BLS. Okay. What, uh, what, um, you were talking about for the thousand, wait, hold, you hold on yeah. for a moment, okay? Okay. Okay, hold on. Hang on. Yeah, I'll, I'll address her in just a moment. Um, do you want to talk about wine? Oh, wait, let me pull her on the phone. Hello? Hello? Hi, it's Wendy. <laughs> Hi, Wendy. How are you? Okay, I just wanted to make a comment on what's going on with the lady and the husband. Yeah. Um, I'm going through a similar situation, going through the phone, and um, but it's with a woman, it's not with a man, thank God. Mm. Um, he's gay. Yeah, her husband, yeah. There's no if ands, or buts about it. He's gay, and he's trying to cover up. He's like young boys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, Wendy, I got to call you back and tell you about my own situation. But it just, it just touched me. I said, let me call him. Mm, well, I'm glad you did. <laughs> I'm sorry to hear about whatever's going on with you. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. But I'll call you back another day on that. Okay, <laughs> take care. Bu- bye-bye. Lindsay Lohan popped up on the set of 50 Cent Video, 3 o'clock in the morning, shooting his new video. That's right. Maybe Lindsay Lohan is the blind item that I read a few weeks ago. A-list white actress who would never be caught, you know, in a splabu situation, but has a a very, very thirsty appetite for the black not actors, but rappers, and asks for her people. Now, I'm not saying this is Lindsay. I'm saying that all of a sudden, why is this sounding like her? I used to think it was Cameron Diaz, you know, on the down low, you know, creeping with, um, you know, like, you know, the bad black boys, you know. Um, this actress in The Blind Item has her people um, scout when they come in and out of town, you know, the, the rappers and stuff, gets her people behind the scenes to, to you know, locate where they're staying in the hotel, goes in, you know, works it out, and then comes back, you know, wipes her mouth and goes back into her white world. And I wonder if Lindsay Lohan is, um, I don't know, I'm just, I'm just wondering out loud. Then again, it could have just been a fun night out, and they said, let's go past, you know, let's go past. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> 50s photo uh, video shoot. DGGG unit. You know, maybe. Puffy did something for Make a Wish Foundation. Puffy, you know what? Um, your size larges run really small. And your jeans run really large. Like, a size 30 in Puffy's jeans fit, like, a size 36. Wow. Like, really big. Wow. Like, so big, not even salvageable big. Um, 
And then your your t-shirts and your your coats, size larges, fit, dare I say, like size smalls. She was really awkward. He's got some really nice stuff. Have you seen any of it? Like, uh, not just the t-shirts and the sweatsuits, but the good stuff for the ladies. Good stuff. But you really got to try it on in the store before you walk away with it. The sizes are kind of, well, you know, just kind of weird. But anyway, he uh, made a a surprise visit to the Chris Everett Charity Tennis Tournament to meet this teenager with cancer, which is really nice. The teenager is 17 years old. And... um. Challen is the teenager's name. Um, has been fighting cancer for two years. There's um, a tumor in her muscles. And on Saturday night, her dream came true when Puffy showed up at her medical center um, to to greet her. And I just, I, yeah, I love the Make-A-Wish Foundation. I really do. And I love celebrities that get involved um, with the Make-A-Wish. That, by the way, that Chris Everett cha- uh, charity tennis tournament raised $13 million to fight drug abuse and help neglected and abused children in South Florida. So, you know, Puffy showed up and, and you know, got with this kid. That's that's good. That's that's nice. That's the stuff the holidays are made of. You know what I mean? Just kind of put aside all the schmutz and you get to the heart of the matter. By the way, ladies, so I went to the website. All right, this is the ultimate shoe website. I have never seen so many shoes that I love anyway. On one site, like like literally, I see a dozen shoes that that I am mouth watering over on this website. If you love stilettos, if you love them, go to xtcshoes.com. Thank me tomorrow. It's windy, man. Me and my wife have been married for fifteen years. He's threatening to leave. What did you do? I had a problem with drugs. You got the drug voice. Yeah. Hey, man. Just asking, what's your drug of choice? You name it. Coke? Uh, yeah. Weed? Yeah. Crack? Yeah. Heroin? Yeah. E-pills? Yeah. Whippets? Alcohol. Gorilla? Yeah. PCP? Yeah. The Wendy Williams Experience. Wow. It's the Sunday Classics with Hal Jackson every Sunday from 12 to 4 p.m. On 107.5 WBLS. Today's R&B and Classic Soul. Oh, look how pretty Trina looks on the cover of January Sister to Sister magazine. She's got a lace front wig. She had this wig on when she came in here in the studio. But she wasn't wearing it just to walk around the street because you can see the lace. I spotted it as soon as she came in the studio. But she said she had just come from where she was on her way to 106 in Park. And this was a stop in between. Mm -hmm. See, on TV and in print, they look fabulous. But in person, you can see the lace almost right away. But they have the look like the hair is actually growing from your scalp. It's great for front of the forehead realness. And it's a very beautiful cover. It's in lavender and she's in purple. And uh uh-uh, not the new Playgirl magazine. Who the hell ordered this for me? What is this show up, Playgirl? (laughs) Might as well not waste it. Wow. Yeah, I'm not interested, though. Here, I'll leave it to the Girl Fridays about town. (laughs) Always busy they are. All right, it's WBLS 107.5, everybody. This hour of the Wendy Williams Experience is brought to you by AARP. And I wanted to remind you also that WBLS would like to thank everybody for joining us for um, our... Our... um, we're Planet Hollywood. I'm sorry, I was distracted. Planet Hollywood last week. Um, we we did some great things over there. Now this is what we need from you in the spirit of giving. There are still people who are about to be homeless from Hurricane Katrina. There are like five thousand, six thousand um, displaced people from New Orleans in our city right now. They're living in various places, and you know um, FEMA and American Red Cross people have covered it thus far, but they're about to be homeless. So if you know a family in need, um, in the spirit of giving. This is what we're doing. And this is not just about Katrina. This is about New Yorkers, okay? Because let's face facts. We still have some work to do on ourselves here. If you know a family in need here in the New York Tri-State area, we would like for you to send us a letter in the spirit to WBLS Spirit of the Holidays. We're at 3 Park Avenue, 41st floor, New York, New York. And the zip code is 116. Um, We would like to grant wishes and make holidays brighter for our listeners. So if you know a family in need, 
please, or if you happen to be the family in need, jot down a letter to us about um, what's so great about this family, what it is that they need, how can we make their holiday brighter, and we're trying to do that, okay? You can get our address, once again, and details on this website, I mean, on this um, contest by going to our website, but I'll give it to you again one more time. 3 Park Avenue, 41st floor, New York, New York. The zip code is 116. Okay, it is that holiday given kind of year. All right, let's go, uh, Goose, to line number two. Ms. Baker, line number two. Ms. Baker? Ms. Baker? Okay, Goose, line number three. Ms. Baker hung up. Goose, line number three hung up, but Ms. Ms. Meredith is on line number three. I mean, um, two. Uh, hi, Meredith? Okay. Nope. Okay. Then let's go to line number four, because Monica wants to talk about that woman who's married to the man regarding that um, basketball player, the recruiter. Hello? How you doing? Monica? Hey, Mon- hey, Monica. Okay. Then we'll go to line number six. Okay. Line number six is a new call. Are you there? I'm here. Hi, how are you? Oh, no, I'm not who you think I am. Oh, who are you? <laughs> I'm Chauncey. I want to talk to you about the master cleanse. Hey, Chauncey, go ahead, talk. It's disgusting. Okay, tell why. <laughs> I, I don't like it. <laughs> oh, you tried it for the first time today? Yes. And you and turn your radio down, Chauncey. And uh, so you don't like the taste of the mix? No, I don't like the taste of it at all. Taryn, you know, who works here with the show, Taryn is on it right now. And she says it's not bad. She says her mother did it, but her mother kind of cheated and hadn't lost the weight. I can't take it. You can't? Mm-mm. How many pounds were you looking to use, Chauncey? Probably 10. Mm, that's not so bad. See, I'd be able to stomach it. It's just that I have to do it when I have to go to the bathroom. Um, when you, you mixed it for the first time earlier this morning? No, I mixed it last night, put it in the refrigerator, mm. and I started it this morning at mm. like 8 o'clock. Mm-hmm. It was terrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need real food and, and real taste. Yes, I do. You might want to try L.A. Weight Loss. But I don't want to lose that much weight. Mm-hmm. Well, try the 1,000-calorie-a-day diet. Just, you know, count up 1,000 calories and stop eating. All right, Wendy. Take care, Chauncey. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Shout-out to Nikki. Nikki is in Brooklyn, says, Wendy, you haven't talked about the Move Against AIDS dance thon you hosted on Saturday. I heard there were a lot of great performances, including Tony Touch, Jody Watley, um, JC Jace. And La Bruya. Yes, it was a good time. A good time had by all. It wasn't a 24-hour dance though. I thought it was. It was uh, a matter of hours. But people were there. Shout out to Gay Men's Health Crisis. It was a crowded place over at Manhattan Center on Saturday night. And we certainly did have a great idea. Special shout out to DJ Mary Mack. She was there during my set. Um, I was there for about two hours. Um, actually, it was just when they opened the doors. But the place was uh, crowded. So, you know. It was a lot of fun. Shout out to everybody who was out there. The move against AIDS. And don't forget, everybody, um, World AIDS Day, which was last week. And, of course, the move against AIDS dance was over the weekend. But, you know, um, the, the precautions that you take to prevent HIV and AIDS should be an everyday thought in your mind. Whether you're married, whether you're single, whether you're, you know... Um, apps abstaining or whether you're a virgin. I mean, it, it's affecting if it's not you directly other people around us so you know it would be prudent to keep that in mind and um you know possibly make an appointment if you've never had an hiv test uh what are you waiting for i i mean i i don't know you know what we're gonna continue with the break but you know i wanted to shout out to nork you know the jfk recreation center in nork Okay, well, there's a big holiday party going on on um, December 19th. Chris Brown and Little Miss Nana are performing. Isn't that great? And it's free for the first 500 people that get there. And that's a JFK Recreation Center for Newark residents in Newark, New Jersey on December 19th. It's from 6 p.m. to 8.30 p.m., so it's nice and early. Obviously, time appropriate for kids. 6 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. on, um, like I said, December 19th at the JFK Rec Center. Chris Brown and Little Miss Nana. You can't beat that. My man Don Poo, I saw him over the week, and he's having a big New Year's Eve uh, extravaganza over in Brooklyn um, at his club, Rain. Keisha Cole performing. That's big, New Year's Eve. That's big. Sure. Shout out to Don Poo. Zon Poo. Zon Poo. I wanted to talk with you about Xbox. Have you already picked this up? Okay, because they're glitches people are complaining about already. We'll talk about that in our next break as we say goodbye. Uh, Tom Cruise, Katie Holmes, Lizzie Blasey, Blasey Blizzy. 
I saw I saw Scarface over the weekend for like the hundredth and fiftieth time. Did you see it? No. Oh, I was gonna say, were we in the house at the same time? I saw Scarface over the weekend. I love that movie. I don't like myself for loving it, but I do. I do. And I stop whenever it comes on. All right, let's continue. Uh, We'll be back with the remainder of the show. And then, of course, the bonus hour at the top of the hour. It's the Wendy Williams Experience till 7 on 107.5 WBLS. That's fabulous. Your engineer, please, some music. Would you please, would you give us a record, por favor? your punching bag, you gon' blow me up. Girl, better leave me alone if I buy your radio station and send you home. Wendy Williams, experience, 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 experience. Hey, 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 everybody. It's the end of another fine show. I want to thank you guys for being here. Thank you to our special guest from the telephone line, May May Ali. Don't forget, everyone, tomorrow night at 8 p.m., um, check your local listings, though, on Lifetime TV. Her special, Earth Angels, will be on TV. And I like May May a whole lot. I'm glad she called in. And happy holidays to her and her father, her other sister, and, you know, the whole Ali family. Also, thank you very much to my makeup and hair person, Steve Lindsay, for coming in for Advice Hour. Hey, we, talk, we talked a little bit about hair. Uh, never got to the makeup part, but we certainly did talk about hair. Don't forget, you can um, get it, Steve, if you're in the New York area. Um, he works on Madison Avenue at Salon. Santa Cruz, um, which is on Madison Avenue, and and he does, you know, weaves and takes care of your natural hair and, and all kinds of other stuff as well. Um, Larissa Cross, I don't know what happened with her, so, you know, I won't talk much about it. Um, I thought she was going to come in. She's a plus-size model with uh, one of the agencies. I don't know. Wendy, this is from Jen in Camden. Wendy, has anyone watched the Boondocks? Yes, Jen, I saw the episode last night, and I saw one episode before that. But Jen goes on to say, they come on too late and are boring, and they use the N-word too much. It was funny in the beginning, but it's corny. Well, I mean, it's just not, to me, the Boondocks is not must-see TV. I mean, I'm glad it's there. Everything isn't for everybody like that. I'll take your last minute comments on the telephone lines too. I don't know who all we have here. Um, I'll take one. Hello? By the way, everybody, the Yin Yang Twins are remixing 13 of their tracks and tossing them onto a new collection to be paired with a DVD. The entire package will be in stores December 27th on TVT Records and it's called the USA Still United. So that's the Yin Yang Twins. I like them. Hello? Hello? Hi! Hi, Wendy? Yeah, how you doing? I'm fine. Good. I'm surprised that I got through, but the last time I got through the BLS, I was 16 years old. Well, look at you calling on the radio <laughs> and getting through and living in New York as well. I'm telling you. Mm-hmm. I was call- wanted to comment on that um, situation with the wife and, and, and the call that she got. Okay. Uh, the call that she received. Go ahead. I don't understand how in the world she could possibly think that there's nothing going on between the two of them. Well, sometimes it's just like you want to have a second opinion because it's almost like your ears couldn't believe what they actually heard, which actually yeah, heard. Yeah, yeah. She's in denial. Yeah. Wow. All right. Well, thank you. Listen, for, uh, where, do, where do I go to get those tickets for the diva, the diva party that you have? Dons and Divas. Uh-huh. Well, um, how old are you? I'm just I'm asking. 47. How, how old? 47. Uh-huh. What do you do for yourself? I'm just asking. I, I'm a um, program manager with uh, Staten Island Developmental Center, Mentally Retarded Adults. Uh-huh. I've been working there 27 years. Uh, I have a granddaughter, Uh-oh. wonderful little girl named Shayla. Okay, okay. And I'm uh, married. Got two boys and another little girl. She's 11. She's got the older swagger for a 47-year-old, doesn't she? Excuse uh-huh. me? No, I was just saying you sound a lot older than 47. I do? Yeah, you do. Oh, my God. Yeah, you, you got to see me, though. I don't look that old. You know? <laughs> you look 46. <laughs> I'm just playing with you. All right, you ready? I'll give you a telephone number. Okay. Okay. Uh, let me see. You live on Staten Island. Staten Island is right next to Brooklyn, right? Yes. Okay. Maybe you want to try Ellen John's Barbershop? Uh-huh. At 718-385-0440. Okay. Or Philani Clothing. Uh-huh. At 718-789-7000. 
Seven eight nine oh four six four oh four six four. Yeah, Great. and thank you for calling. Also, everybody, if you're um, at all interested, if you have a PayPal account, go to paypal.com and press the button to get tickets for the Dons and Divas Extravaganza. If you live in the Philly, Delaware area, you can call 302-250-6650. Also, if you buy five or more tickets, you can get delivery by calling 973 973- and they deliver in, in the 212 and 7182. 973-418-7000. You can always go to my website at the Wendy Williams Experience.com and, you know, look for the Dons and Divas information and, and hit and press and get tickets that way too. But um, just keep in mind, everybody, that this is not... I'm a woman of a certain age, but I certainly am very, very spirited. I don't consider myself... I has been by any stretch of the imagination. I like to go out and have a good damn time. Drop it like it's hot. Drink my Hennessy and have fun. Now, I'm on the cusp because I attract a lot of younger people, but I attract a lot of older people. And I just want to caution the older people coming to this party. This is not a party where you're going to be able to rest your cane and have a seat. This is not an old, crotchety... I, I appreciate you listening, and, and I want you to continue listening. But everything is not for everybody. The Dons and Diva Extravaganza Party is a young person's party in age and in spirit. It is 21 and older to get in. We, we're drinking. I'm sure there'll be some cheats in there. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? And we be doing the damn thing. And if you by any chance think that this is like a Lynx affair, shout out to you all older crows. You know exactly what I'm talking about. My parents went to a Lynx affair this past week. If you think this is a Lynx affair or the Alpha Gold and, and Black Ball or, or some coin, it no. It, this is not the Drifters or the Continentals formal. This is not the AKAs formal. This is a Dons and Divas extravaganza. And if you've never been to one, be ready. If you are looking for a seat all night and your feet hurt, forget about it. You know, if, if, if it's going to make you uncomfortable to see a nude model with a body painting, this is not for you. And I appreciate everybody who listens. But like I said, everything isn't for everybody. Like the boondocks is not for me. Everything, every party is not for everybody. This is not some $20 party where you come in and there's seats like a church function. It's not that type of thing, okay? This is open ball. This is Mary J. Blige. This is Keisha Cole. It, straight, this this is a doing the damn thing party. This is where we're celebrating life and doing the damn thing. The spirit of this party is a youthful vibe. The people in this party are hot to death. So. Put that where? Back there. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, you know. Uh, shout out to everybody who got the new Xbox 360. There's a man in Chicago who's suing Microsoft saying that Xbox game console uh, was designed with several flaws, uh, causing it to overheat and freeze up. His name is Robert Bayer, and he's already filed his lawsuit. He says that um, the central processing unit of the Xbox 360 overheats, affecting the heat-sensitive chips and causing the console to lock up. You do not want your child's fingers or your fingers start burning up while you're playing it. Well, the spokesperson for Microsoft, Molly O'Donnell, says we have received a few isolated reports about the console heating up. I just want to put that out there to you. I know you're scrambling for one. Damn, damn, damn. I never talked to you about the celebrity wines today. All right. We can talk about that tomorrow as well as um, several other things brewing. You know, every show, I can't fit in every last thing that I want to talk about. If I could, then, you know, that would be great. But uh, there's always tomorrow, God willing. And I'll speak to you then. I love you for listening today. Take care. Bye-bye. He's part of me, boy. <laughs> See you later. Because I'm saying bye-bye. Good night. Program complete. Well, I was going to save those um, the celebrity wines and stuff for tomorrow for advice hour, but I do want to share with you <clears throat> what I have. I, I bought some pretty good stuff regarding wines. And listen, it'll make for great holiday gifts too. 
I'll give you all the details and I'll take your phone calls and we can talk about advice. We can talk about gossip. Um, Mark from Roselle, I have your facts regarding Alfre Woodard on Desperate Housewives. And uh, we can talk about whatever it is that you want. The events of the day as we round out the show with the bonus hour of the Wendy Williams Experience next on 107.5 WBLS. Here's what's happening from 107.5 WBLS, home of the Steve Harvey Morning Show. New York's ultimate Christmas party is the WBLS Party with a Purpose, December 17th at the Marriott Marquis Broadway Ballroom, 45th Street and Broadway, sponsored by the New York City Department of Health and Preferred Equity Solutions and Razak Hair Products. Proceeds benefit anti-domestic violence programs, Safe Horizons, and Day One. Tickets on sale now at Ticketmaster. BLS. Newark, New Jersey. Don't miss New Jersey Performing Arts Center's Kwanzaa Festival and Marketplace, Thursday, December 15th through Saturday, December 17th, featuring a host of free events for the whole family. BLS. This calendar is brought to you by Airwick Scented Oils, creating the perfect mood for your home this holiday season. For more information, log on to WBLS. 107.5 WBLS, New York. She's a mother. Hey, Mommy. Happy so good. Here. Oh, uh, don't drop. She's a singer. Struggle. In and out. Ups and downs. Uh, Put that where? Whoa, whoa. Back there. She drops it like it's hot. Brown juice in one hand and get right in the other. She has Tourette's moments. Although I do have to be honest with you, the last time that I went, um, Dame Dash! What did that have to do with anything? She spazzes out. No, you didn't tear up your 40 something year old body! No! She's gangster. Anybody who tries to get in the way is going to get rolled over. She's the queen of all media. Wendy Williams. Since you've been listening this far, we're going to throw in a little bonus hour. You ready? How long is this bonus hour going to last? I'm getting addicted. No, let me tell you. I love, love, love this extra hour. Everything is organic here on the bonus hour. Yeah, baby. Hey, yo, check this out. It's Wendy, man. Here it is. It's the bonus hour on the Wendy Williams Experience. 107.5 WBLS, New York. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the bonus hour. Vaughn Harper comes up at 7 o'clock with the quiet storm. We're looking forward to that. And while the commercials were playing, I was in the other room changing into a dress because I am um, co-chair of the big, um, the big benefit going on tonight at the Chelsea, at the Lighthouse Restaurant at the Chelsea Pier. Um, Harry Belafonte is giving... Um, kind of call a big humanitarian award, and yeah, it's a big to do. This this was a this is going to be a great night. Twenty five thousand dollars, I think fifteen thousand, ten thousand, and five thousand dollars for a table, and then individual tickets are five hundred dollars a pop. So it should be a room full of people with extra money for the holidays, ready to splash it out to help, continual help to find a cure for AIDS, and enlighten people about AIDS and HIV. So that's the purpose of tonight. And I'll be there with a black dress on in the style of Marilyn Monroe over the grate at or the subway grate. Right? It's Norma Kamali Matt Jersey. You know? And some shoes from trannygear.com. <laughs> <laughs> well, and they're size 12. That's all I'm saying. And walking around in them, well, I can't say all day, but I can certainly dance in them all night because they're nice and big. <laughs> and trannygear.com, they understand that big also means you have to make it a little wider. Not like Jimmy Choo and Manola Blahnik where they make size 11s, and believe it or not, size 12s, but they're narrow as if you have a size 6 foot. So who can wear that? I know who can wear it. Rashumba. I don't know what size shoe Rashumba wears, but I, you know, um, she's um, an acquaintance in the industry of mine. And Rashumba's feet are so cute and narrow. They're long, but they're cute and they're narrow. They're like little tiny Barbie feet, just so narrow. And Paris Hilton says that she wears a size 11, but have you ever seen the width of her feet? Her feet are so narrow. You know, the, what the hell? <laughs> Can somebody show me some bigger sizes with, with wider widths? I can. Trannygear.com and this new website that I just discovered over the weekend and I went to it today and sometime after the holidays, after I finish, you know, exhaling from, you know, holiday spending, I'm going to treat myself. 
If you wear a size 4 through a size 13 shoe, you can go to xtcshoes.com and you're going to love what you see. I couldn't believe that I that I I loved like 10 pair of shoes easily. As a matter of fact, I think this place is going to be my one-stop shop as far as website, web shopping for shoes. XTCshoes.com. Uh, ever heard of Pimp C? Yeah. yeah. He, I got a green hat that says Pimp C on it. And that's a, sometimes that's my go-to hat. I don't know why that's my go-to hat to take my child to school when I put on a baseball <laughs> hat. It's wrong. It's wrong, but it's there. Hang in kind of where I keep my take him to school clothes, you know, coat is. And so I put it on, ignoring what it says on it. Well, he's been incarcerated for nearly five years, this pimp he has. And reportedly, he's been granted parole release before Christmas. Well, his real name is Chad Butler, and he's currently serving an eight-year sentence for parole violation on aggravated assault with a deadly weapons charge. This all happened. He's from Texas, and he was sentenced to prison back in 2001, and he wasn't scheduled to be eligible for parole until 2005. Well, now here we are in 2005, and on this past Saturday, December 3rd, I mean, it was announced that Pimp C is now approved for parole. Now, you know, Pimp C and his man Bun B... (laughs) Damn. Come on, this is crazy. <laughs> Formed UGK in the 80s, and they released several major label albums with Jive Records, including Too Hard to Swallow, Riding Dirty, and Dirty Money. Plus, Damn. plus, you know, Pimp C has also produced records for Master P, C Murder, The Three Six Mafia, David Banner, and, you know, some other people. Uh, Crooked Letter. He made a cameo appearance on the track with Jay-Z and uh, Young Jeezy and others. So... Pimp C uh, has served his time, and uh, he'll be out in time for Christmas, if that means anything to you. Let's go to line number one. Janine is on there. She gives her last name, too. You guys never give your last name. Hey, Janine Baker. Hi, Wendy. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Nice to have you here. Yes. So what's going on, Janine? Turn your radio down. I got it down. Okay. Okay. Hello? Yes, uh, yes. Janine. Uh-huh. I was calling for um, Don's and Divas tickets. Well, we actually don't have any today. Okay. Which means that we'll probably have a couple pairs every hour tomorrow. Okay. And leading up to December 22nd, we're going to be doing, you know, the ticket blowout thing. Uh-huh. But if you would like to find out where you can just get, get them on your own. Yeah. Then what... Oh, Actually, we do have Don's and Divas tickets for today. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, no, 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 no. I can't just give them to you because you're on the telephone. Oh, Wendy, the first time they disconnected me. Uh, I was speaking to one of the interns, and then she tried to hook me up with Goose, and he disconnected me. Well, damn, Goose, what happened? A, a whole hour, Wendy. Well, Janine, you have a whole hour to play on the telephones with hey, WBLS? I stopped dinner when I got through. Oh. So they're waiting for dinner. Oh, well, why don't you go back and give him dinner? And because I'm not giving away, you know, as a matter of fact, because this goose just pulled out the pair of tickets. Goose, why don't you tell me we had tickets today? I didn't even know. I'm sorry. You just found them under this pile of yeah, stuff? Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, then after we go to commercials um, in about 20 minutes, and we'll come back and give away those passes. Okay. Thanks, Janine. Thank you. All right. Take Bye-bye. care. Now, Stephanie is online, too, and she wants to know the same thing I see on the computer, Steph. So call back after the commercials, okay, when I officially give them away. I didn't know that I had them. Oh, okay. Okay. And Nicole on line seven, you call back too. And Lisa on line number four, you all call back too. You call back too. By the way, you know, there's delivery service. For those of you who don't want to wait, don't be scared off by the 973. They say if you buy, they meaning uh, question mark entertainment and face down entertainment, if you buy five tickets or more, you get delivery in the tri state. 973 is the telephone number, 418 And, um, We'll be debuting at Don's and Divas a new champagne that has been big, big, big over in France and other parts of Europe and um, is just coming to, to to the United States. The th- three levels of this particular champagne, uh, the level of, at Don's and Divas, I believe, will be equivalent to the Vouv and Moet Nectar. 
It's called Giorgio Vaselli. Or excuse me, Georges Vaselli, or however you'd say it in French. <laughs> Some people from that vineyard, uh, the boozy part of the Champagne region, will be in town from Europe at the Dons and Divas Extravaganza. And the vineyard where they make this um, Giorgio Vaselli is right next to the Vouv Vineyard and Moet. And I don't know if you know anything much about um, Champagne, but I can tell you that it's not allowed to be called Champagne. The law says, unless it's from the Champagne region of France. That's why you get the sparkling wines and all like that, because they're not doing, I mean, you know, it might take you where you need to go in your head, but Champagne is a very, very unique product indigenous to the Champagne region of France. So I feel very honored. Um, shout out to everybody from the boozy, uh, how do you say, boozy, boozy? I'm such a stupid American. <laughs> I love Champagne, though. And so um, this, George, this George Vaselli, I think you all are really going to love it. By the way, shout out to Keisha Cole. We'll see you on December 22nd, girl. For the second year in a row, she's going to be at the Dons and Divas Extravaganza. First time she came, she was just getting her sea legs in this in this business. Now she's doing the damn thing. Yeah. Yeah. So everybody, Comedy Central. Oh, shout out to Debbie on the phones. Debbie, uh, don't take t- don't take calls regarding Don's and Divas tickets because I got them in the second half of the hour. So anything else, you know, sure, people can call about. Okay. Unless they're calling to ask about, you know, wear and stuff because if you like live in Queens you might want to know okay Hillside Auto Spa is Ron you can get tickets from Ron 718-523-2309 you can still go to paypal.com for those of you crafty with it like I don't have a paypal account but I damn sure work with enough people that if I wanted tickets for this you know or I can go to my mom and dad they have paypal accounts and stuff like that get me get me these tickets for Dons and Divas you know oh hell I do delivery you know, I give him. I give. I buy a ticket for me, and then one for four of my friends, and then I'd say, "Can you come deliver?" At nine seven three, you can get delivery. Uh, four one eight seven thousand. Comedy Central is going to make the most of some leftover footage of Dave Chappelle and the Chappelle Show. Apparently, the third season of the Chappelle Show is going to make it onto the air. In well, kind of, sort of. <laughs> Comedy Central has not decided whether they're going to air this leftover footage in March, April, May, or June, but they're going to do it. Um, It's not exactly a full season. It's only four episodes, but here's what a Comedy Central spokesperson says. At long last, viewers will have a chance to see for themselves exactly what Dave Chappelle was working with. Mm. And... um, Comedy Central says that it's still working on a way to present the show without introduction. The show speaks for itself. I mean, if you all own the footage, then cut something up and make something of it. They have four episodes worth of sketch comedy to air to make up the third season. Dave Chappelle hadn't filmed any studio segments to accompany this stuff. So they're going to try to figure out how to do it. Uh, In the meantime... um, Charlie Murphy's got a new show coming out on Comedy Central. Plus, Charlie Murphy's in the boondocks. I mean, you know, I hate to say that, you know, off the back of Dave Chappelle, Charlie Murphy is, you know, seeing his comeuppance. But because I know Charlie and Dave are cool. I'm not trying to create a wedge. But, um, you know, what's Charlie Murphy supposed to do? Sit on the sidelines while people offer him stuff? No. He's got work he wants to do also. All 600 lights on my Martha Stewart six and a half foot tree worked when I got home from Kmart. Cool. Yeah. Wow. Normally we do. And it's funny because when I was um, watching the um, Fox 5 News this morning, they were talking about hiring a, a decorator for Christmas. And that's what we normally do at our house, except this year Christmas is not the same because nobody's coming into town and, you know, so on and so forth. And I just feel, you know, it's just the three of us. And I started to get adult selfish and not put anything up. But then, you know, I look at my kid and I'm like, you know what? He still has the spirit of Christmas. He's going to see the Radio City Christmas show um, this week. As a matter of fact, this spectacular. And I just felt like, all right, let me do something. Now, what happened with this decorating company? First of all. They make you purchase their products. So, you know, I got this 15-foot Christmas tree and, like, the full-blown festive thing 
huge reeds that there's no way. Like my dad, me, my husband, I'm not calling a maintenance man, you know, to, to you know, come and put the stuff. It's just kind of like, you know, all, it's just all too much. It's the full blown explosion. And I only want to do that if we're going to have, you know, company in and out, so on and so forth. And I never had, you know, Christmas before the full blown explosion. So I've never had a, you know, Christmas tree like that in my own, you know, Wendy world. I mean, you know, growing up as a kid, of course. So I went out to Kmart this weekend and um, got a six and a half foot tree. And then I was nervous, like when I get it home. And, you know, when you get these trees, you got to be sure. Because my sister said, well, all the lights working. And I said, yeah, we got a six and a half foot, 600 lights. She said, that's why I don't have a lot of lights. Because we have a seven foot with 300 lights. I said, oh, well, that's nothing. You know, the, the lights count. The amount of lights. <laughs> You know, once you get those 600 lights in there, you have to very little decorating to do beyond that. Then I'll just take it apart. It comes in three parts, throw it in the box and save it until next year. Maybe next year Christmas will be bigger and we'll be back to the 15 foot tree and the full blown explosion outside. But, um, and then Home Goods, they have a nice, they had a nice selection of, um, you know, the black Christmas things like Black Santa and all like that. This is the first year I didn't have to use, you know, brown mixed with black eyeshadow to, <laughs> and a moist brush to paint Santa's face and then once I get everything proper then I use clear um, polyurethane coat and shh, from Home Depot to set it and it lasts every year you throw it in your storage room bring it back up Santa's still black <laughs> and as far as his eyes yes they're blue but you use darker uh, you use like like dark dark black for them to you know come out brown you use dark black um, eyeshadow and you paint that and then you poly- polyurethane the eyes and then you have black Santa and I've done that with, with all the Santas in our house shout out to the white people uh, you know one love and all like that it's just that you know there's a thing in a lot of black households uh, regarding that I grew up with white Santa you know and, and it didn't have a it didn't have a um, a negative effect on my um, on my my being black and proud now as an adult but I know what I want for my son. Yeah. And I want him to love everybody. And I can't help who he falls in love with and everything like that. I just want to be sure that I'm setting, you know, setting things up properly. And he said pictures taken in Santa at the mall. The mall Santas are usually all white. But what I found out is, is that um, I found a place that this coming Saturday is, is having Black Santa come at noon. And so I'm going to make sure that he's, you know, part of that. You know, because I can paint them all around the house that I, if I want, but every mall has white Santa. So if you're going to display this picture, it's white Santa. He doesn't really ask. You know, it's just a thing, but he doesn't realize to ask yet. So before he even realizes to ask, I want him to understand, you know, you are a black child of God. And, and, um, Zawidzu. <laughs> <laughs> Wendy, damn, I love you. I'm still stuck on the I'll call you back when I get off no matter how late it is. What the F? Ow. I can't believe she ain't down on that campus with her hair in four plaits with a family sized jar of Vaseline. I do declare she just heard a message from the mistress or the hystress. Oh, this is talking about the girl from Advice Hour with the husband and the camp and the and the recruit. Mm-hmm. How you yeah. A woman heard a cryptic message on her husband's uh, voicemail, and he is a recruiter for a college basketball team. She didn't say what school. One of the players left the message saying that, you know, he's about to get on the train, um, but he, uh, but I'll call you um, as l- I'll call you even if I call you late. I, I love you and goodbye. This is what he's saying to this woman's husband. The woman's husband's a, com- uh, a recruiter. And she heard the message. And I said, well, it has very, very big homosexual overtones. It doesn't sound proper to me. She was calling me, asking me what I thought. So Super J is saying that she can't believe that the wife isn't on on the campus with a jar of Vaseline. (laughs) Shout out to Mark and Roselle. What's happening, Roselle? Wendy, this in a nutshell, the reason Alfre Woodard was chosen for the role on Desperate Housewives is because those white heifers weren't about to share the sexual spotlight with a sister that can drop it like it's hot with that kind of persona. No disrespect to Miss Woodard who I absolutely love but she is more earthy in appearance and therefore not a threat. They could have chosen someone like Shirley Ralph or Vivica Fox 
But the network learned that lesson when they cast Diane Carroll as the first black on in a primetime role. And she stole Joan Collins Thunder. <clears throat> I don't know that she stole Joan Collins Thunder. I thought that they shared the spotlight fabulously together. And I love that. And I and I wish that um, they chose somebody with more sex, sex appeal. That's the best way I can put it. Instead of Alfre Woodard. And that whole plot and everything. I just wish that they would, you know, take a machete and chop them all all off this show. <laughs> Her, the son, the weirdo in the basement, the whole bit. I just, that's when I go take my breaks. <laughs> yeah, I don't even watch anymore that part of the show. Who's Xboxing it with their kids for the holidays? I want to repeat this again because this Xbox 360 is big. How much are they charging for the Xbox? Is three ninety nine, four ninety nine? We're still working off PSPs at our house. Are you kidding me? My kid is still asking for you know movies to put in it and all like that. He oh he loves it. Mama! But the PSP, I mean the Xbox. Um, th- there has already been a lawsuit filed by a man in Chicago. I was saying last hour. Um, his name is Robert Bayers, and he brought the suit saying that the power supply and central process unit in the Xbox 360 overheats and affects the heat-sensitive chips inside, causing the console to lock up. And the person who's a spokesperson for Microsoft, Molly O'Donnell, says, We have received a few isolated reports uh, on the console not working as expected. Well, I say if you're paying four hundred dollars for something, everything needs to work right away. Oh, absolutely! Wasn't this Xbox just released last week, and already there are glitches? Mm-hmm. People are clamoring at, at, for holiday season to get these things. Yeah, they set the hype up really well. Yeah, they yeah. did. They set it up really well. I can't believe that there's a there's a lawsuit launched already. Well, that's why there's problems because they were trying to get it out in time for the holiday season. Yeah, probably all the glitches weren't worked out. Rushing that money so bad. Yeah. Well, I don't know anybody um, who's, you know, like anybody with kids and stuff who's actually going out to execute the buy. I know people with kids and I know and I know people themselves who want the Xbox. But everybody seems to be saying at this particular point, we'll wait until it's more available. Yeah. Yeah, Wait until it's more available. (laughs) Tina Turner. Um is being honored at Kennedy Center. George Bush is going to be there and Laura Bush. It's going to be an afternoon reception at the White House on Sunday to celebrate the 28th um, Kennedy Center honors. Robert Redford's going to be there, Tony Bennett, some people from the ballet. It's going to be a real, you know, I guess, big to do. By the way, Fantasia and Vanessa Williams and Star Jones and Tiger Woods and them are among the celebrities that are due to appear for the Walt Disney World's annual Christmas Day Parade held in Orlando, Florida. It comes on TV. It's going to be hosted by Regis and Kelly. It's going to air on Christmas Day at 10 a.m. And, um, well, it's not going to actually go down at 10 a.m., but it's not going to broadcast until 2.30 in the afternoon. Excuse me, 10 a.m. Eastern Time, 2.30 Pacific Time. The performance portion, they say, is going to be hosted by Ryan Seacrest. Boy, you can't hate on this dude. (laughs) He just really, you know, with that all-American apple pie smile and stuff. Go, Seacrest, go. (laughs) I mean, just run the race. I mean, what's the point in hating? He's the chosen one. That's right. It's like people who hate on Tyra Banks, of which I'm not one of them. What's the point in hating? Ride with her. Exactly. That woman is doing the damn thing. And you know what? And don't hate on her because... And while I do admit Tyra has really, really phony ways, but I'm overlooking all that because you know what? There's a bit of that that I guess you have to do for that final buck in Hollywood to do that final final crossover thing. I guess there's a lot of selling out you have to do. And it's a shame that when people sell out or when people are phony, that you can see through it like that. But, you know, not for nothing. You can't hate on her. You know who's supposed to have a a career like Tyra Banks to me? Veronica Webb. Veronica Webb is a smart cookie. Listen, a long time ago when she was actually, and she was never declared as a supermodel, but she always hung in the right circles. 
And she started out doing this journalistic work. I remember she used to write articles. I'd see them pop up in like newsworthy magazines like Rolling Stone and whatnot. Remember Paper Magazine and Interview Magazine? And, and she would do these articles. And I'm thinking, this woman is really planning life after modeling. She's really planning it. And Tyra kind of took off, in my opinion, where Veronica left off. Veronica, of course, as we know, went on. She had babies and she married and she moved to Florida and she's doing very well. And shout out to you, Veronica Webb. I know you're happy with your life. But Tyra Banks, she had a plan. Mm -hmm. yeah. And she knew, not for nothing, and this is not a diss, that she could not fight, wait forever. Mm -hmm. Now, you know and I know, Tyra Banks is only one frozen chocolate from frozen hot chocolate from serendipity away from a full blown explosion. So now she can eat and she can relax. Tyra Banks is a size uh, 10 is still a beautiful woman. So she's got a few pounds to gain before she's that size 10. And she's got the talk show and all this other kind of stuff. You can't hate on this woman. You just you, she's a she's a force now. So it's like get down or lay down. Tyra is in the building. Let me see. Uh, do you have uh, line number seven? Yes. Okay. Uh, Eunice? Eunice? No, my name's Norman. Oh, hi, Norman. I'm sorry. Eunice must have hung up, or this is from last hours. Anyway, what's going on, Norm? Um, my wife and I are friends with a couple. and um, Wife? Oh. They, yeah. Okay. And um, mm -hmm. the wife is very... She has she has moments where she's kind of musty. Oh, like those armpits get kind of hot sometimes. Yes, <laughs> but she doesn't seem like the kind of girl that that would happen to because she always looks nice mm -hmm. and she always dresses nice, and mm -hmm. you can tell she takes takes really good care of herself. Mm -hmm. And like we spend time with them and everything like that, and it's like sometimes it gets to a point where. We want to say something, but we don't want to hurt. You can't say anything. Feeling. You can't say anything. And you know what? It might be that she's not doing her um, her laundry in good rotation or sending stuff to the cleaners. You know how sometimes you can be fresh out of the shower, but if that sweater that you've already worn once, it's cashmere, you don't want to take it every time to the cleaners. It right. might be, sometimes the clothing is musty. I mean, I'm not making excuses for her. I'm simply saying to you that it's, it's inappropriate for you and your wife to say anything. Just deal with it. And you can't do anything. You sound like a sophisticated man. You can't do anything childish like give her, you know, secret, you know, deodorant right. for for uh, Christmas or anything like that. You just have to deal with it. It is inappropriate to say absolutely anything to her at all. All right. Yeah. All right. Thank you. I'm sorry, Norm. You're the, you're the greatest one. Thank you, Norman. Bye -bye. Shout out to my dude, Corleone, in Jersey City. If you know Corleone, just know he does not want his telephone number all over the radio. But Corleone is holding tickets for the Dons and Divas extravaganza. He's got some for you. So if you see him, creep up. You tell him how many you need. And, and then I'll see you on December 22nd, too. What's up, Corleone? So, um, hello? You want oh, I don't have a list. So I don't, I don't know what lines I'm going. Oh, let me see. Everybody wants Don's and Divas tickets. Let me see. I don't have anything clean. Hey, Deb, what's going on there on the phones? All right, I'll just take anybody that she has on hold. Hello? Hello. Hi, it's Wendy. Hi, Wendy. How are you? Good. Um, I was calling, well, actually, I was calling about, because I want your opinion on a personal note, but did you see Superhead on the Susie Orman show this weekend? No, I did not. <laughs> She's well, talking about managing money, Superhead is? Oh my God, Wendy! It was too funny. She I was on the, okay. I guess I'm not sure if it. She just taped the show, or if it was right when she got with the book, because she was telling um Susie that she owes ten thousand on um her car, and she's about twenty five thousand dollars in debt, something to that extent. Mm -hmm. But she wanted Susie's advice because she wants to buy a million dollar home in L. A. <laughs> Mm, okay. You've seen Susie, right? Yes, I do. I'm, the look I'm, on her face was quite um, incredible. And Superhead was actually in the studio with Susie? Yeah. And she was talking about her husband and how when they live together, they maintain, like, I think, expenses of about 300000 a month. Oh, gosh. And then up, she Superhead. was telling Susie that as for her son and saving money, uh -huh. she has a little pot outside her door mm -hmm. where everyone... 
of uh, her friends, his uncles, mm-hmm. deposits a dollar every well, time they come visit. Play uncles, no doubt. <laughs> but anyways, that's not what I was calling. Okay. I was calling just because I wanted your opinion on something. Okay. Um, I'm 32, and I uh, have a degree in criminal justice. Mm-hmm. Um, I work in immigration. My husband works in real estate. He's 35. Mm -hmm. We've been together five years. Mm -hmm. And about three years ago, I asked him for something that now I want to go about, but I'm not sure how to take care of. I asked my husband if he would mind if I brought home a woman for myself while he had me. Okay, do you guys have kids? Kids? <laughs> we have children. Okay, and how long have you? did you say you were married? Uh, five years. Okay, go ahead. And so, <laughs> has he, has, did he ever... Randy, I don't want your advice on whether I should or not, because I'm planning to regardless. But I'm very reserved, and um, I'm trying to see how would I even go about finding someone that I don't have to worry about too much without going online or... Well, I will say this. Anybody that you bring into your relationship, it, you, you, there's going to be a concern. Whether you find that person online or whether that person is your next door neighbor or your sister who you would think would never want your husband. You're going well, to you're gonna have to be concerned with anybody. I would not go online. If I were you and your hus- husband, I would go out um, together and then you choose before you leave the house whether it's going to be both of you have an opinion on who to pick up or whether it's all on you and your husband just helps smack the ball home or whether your husband goes up and flirts with a girl and says my wife and I want you for the evening there's my wife right over there and you wink at her and you get it started that way I would definitely make this about the two of you finding some somebody because if you find this person just on your own and she turns you out and your eyes roll in the back of your head in front of your husband He might think that either A, you've been with her before, or B, that you're going to continue this affair behind his back. Well, Wendy, I think you're absolutely right about everything. However, we've discussed all of this. I've, I've... We've been talking about it for the past three years. Oh. We are very in love with each other. We have a very active sex life. Um, he he actually does break it up, but sometimes he will, you know, while we're in the moment. Uh-huh. Um, he buys me pornos because I asked him to buy them for me. You know, girls mm-hmm. are girls. Mm-hmm. And um, this has only been because of uh, shows like yours. No offense, Wendy. I love you to death. Thank you. I, just watching different shows and I guess now I'm curious and I'm not looking for a relationship I'm only looking for a one night stand I just want to bring home a woman so that I can have her while my husband has me and we've discussed all kinds of details and I don't know where to go I well, don't want to get online how about Jamaica or you know Barbados or uh-huh. Miami or Arizona like why don't you go away because that way and change your Damn, this sounds like sloppy sex. Like, uh, all right, let me just preface this by saying I am not encouraging irresponsible sex in any way, shape, or form. And that's but why I called. if you are looking to meet somebody who you don't have to worry about anymore, your husband doesn't have to worry about you being the lover, you don't have to worry about her, then what you all. Is this revealing too much about how my mind works? <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes, it is. L- listen to me. <laughs> you and your husband plan a vacation someplace sexy. Mm-hmm. And when you go on this vacation, it, it is about you time with you and he. But your mission is to find the cutest housekeeper or the cutest vacation guest. And you change your names to something like, uh, uh, you know, Bambi Bennett. Or, you know, you change everybody change their name. Well, we, 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 we even discussed as far as what we would like her to look like. Um sort of along the lines with me because I'm a small petite person. Yes. So, I, you know, I need someone like me. Well, you know what? Well, that sounds good. I, I, I like the idea of going away. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, you know, that that's... <sighs> That's what I would do. That's, that's, I don't know. I'm still, I'm still, it's still been three years because I'm, I'm, you know, I don't, I'm reserved. I've been with my husband for five and then I was with his father for the remainder. So I haven't really been around, but uh, with my husband, I'll try anything. All right. Well, th- I wish you well. And thanks for calling. Thanks, Wendy. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> okay. So, um. We're going to take a break, but before we go into the break, I want to shout out to Roscoe, who says, 
Dear Wendy, thank you for letting the 45 plus crowd know what Don's and Divas really is. If you plan on going home early, do yourself a favor, old fart and stay home. Oh my God. <laughs> I was at Don's and Divas too at the Copa. I was married then, but now I'm a free man and I don't want to see those wrinkled, slew footed former hot messes at Don's and Divas. They don't have no business hanging with the kids. Here's the thing, Roscoe. There are some 45-year-olds that can give a 25-year-old a run for her money or his money. And if that's your case, then you need to be at Don's and Divas. But I just get the feeling that because this show caters to such a wide variety of people, that older people are getting it confused with being the Lynx affair. Mm-hmm. And it's not. And this is not, uh, you know, the Montclair chapter of the Drifters formal. It, no, no. This is a party hosted by Mary J. Blige, who, I might add, is set to portray the legendary jazz singer Nina Simone in movie. Congratulations, Mary. It's an MTV Paramount film project. And, um, you know, Nina Simone had an electric career that took off in the 60s. Um, She's a, a, you know, jazz. She passed away in 2003. Uh, She eventually moved to France and, you know, after she retired in the mid-70s and she passed away. But um, Mary J. Blige, um, congratulations to you. It's it's not yet titled, but it's going to focus on her life. And um, congratulations. So this, in the meantime, is all happening around the time that she's about to host the Dons and Divas Extravaganza. She's got her new CD, The Breakthrough, set to hit stores on December 20th. And this is great. This is terrific for Mary. Seventh studio full CD. Mm-hmm. Good for Mary. That's how you do the damn thing. Okay, we're going to take a break, everybody. When we come back, we'll finish out the bonus hour. I wanted to talk with you about Young Buck. I wanted to talk with you about those celebrity wines. I wanted to talk with you about Brandy. Um, we got some of your faxes to read. And, of course, the Dons and Divas extravaganza passes to give away. So um, keep it where you got it. It's the Wendy Williams Experience till 7 o'clock on 107.5 WBLS. What's up? This your boy Trey Sons, baby. You listening to the bonus hour on 107.5 WBLS. Yeah. yeah. And this hour is being brought to you by Nissan Parts and Service. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Um, in a moment, I'm going to be giving away the Dons and Divas extravaganza passes. 866-GET-WENDY. You should be calling now, and I'm going to pick up the phone. I don't take, like, call the number 10 or call the number 5. I just call because if it's, if it's not right, I got to go, you know, to somebody else that it is. And I also wanted you to know, I know that you get nervous about open bar. I've been to too many open bar parties where they serve basement liquor. I cannot stand asking for cranberry and vodka and getting some mess that's going to give me a headache. I want my kettle one. I want my Grey Goose. And at my Don's and Divas extravaganza, it's open bar with top shelf. You want your Hennessy? You're going to get that. You're not going to get some headache cognac. <laughs> Shout out to my radio station, WBLFs. S, thank you so much for supporting my Dons and Divas extravaganzas, one through five, and now number six. Shout out to B&B Jewelers in Wayne, New Jersey, courtesy Lincoln Mercury in the Bronx. Um, Demetrio Furs, who's been sponsoring all along. They happen to have tickets, by the way. If you're interested, you don't want to win. You just want to go get them. Demetrio's is on 30th Street in Midtown Manhattan, um, 212-695-8469. Eight four six nine. Shout out to my special friends at Dollhouse. They've got great jeans. Go to their website. They got great stuff. Taryn, you ever wear Dollhouse shoes and stuff? Yeah. The shoes go up yeah. to size eleven. Steve Madden, big sponsor of this year's Dons and Divas. Love you since forever. Shout out to the company Your Hair Care. Special shout out to Ray Zach. You know everybody who's been supporting and whatnot. Thank you. I wanted to remind you, uh, everybody. That, um, oh, look at this. All right, don't get these two parties confused because I want to tell you about our WBLS Christmas party with a purpose. This is also another fabulous thing going on December 17th. I'll be there, Vaughn will be there, Steve will be there. Well, I'll be there. It's Saturday. December 17th at the Broadway Ballroom of the Marriott Marquet, 45th Street and Broadway. This is a Christmas party with a purpose. The, the food, the drink, the entertainment. Don't miss out. 
live performances by Vivian Green, Donnell Jones, Cameo, uh, John Heem. There's somebody that I'm leaving out. I can't remember who, because I remember saying, wow, it's a full-blown, I can't remember the fifth person. Anyway, get your tickets now for our WBLS Christmas Party with a Purpose by calling Ticketmaster at 212-307-7171, sponsored by the New York City Department of Health, Preferred Equity Solutions, and the fabulous people at Razak. And our party is benefiting the Anti-Domestic Violence Program Day 1, formerly called Break the Cycle. That's our party with a purpose. Yes, yes. <laughs> a lot of clapping going on. Shout out to the Gaudis again. You know, for as many times as I thought that they were going to go down, and I've said it, is as many times as I feel like I have to come back. And I don't feel like I'm eating crow. I just thought that they would be part of the sacrificial lamb thing of hip-hop. Like, Kim goes to jail, Gotti's go to jail, or Kelly goes to jail. That's the three. You know how good happens in three and bad happens in three? You know? Congratulations. They're free. Irvin Chris, excuse me, Lorenzo at the Inc. Records. They were pumping their fist outside the courtroom. We did it, they're saying. And, and so congratulations. And shout out to Ja Rule and Ashanti also. I really did think they were going to get you. You know, you know, it's very difficult, you know, for people these days, particularly black people, period, man or woman, to, to set any kind of business up. When we walk into a bank, you know, it's not about getting that small business loan. We, you know, we ask somebody for a, a break, you know, to, to get something happening. And, and oftentimes we've got to go to the block. And if that happens, that happens. But if you make something great of it, they can still come back and find out where you got that that seed money and then try to string you up. So, you know, congratulations to um, the Gaudis. They dodged that bullet. Good deal. Good deal. The Lorenzos, excuse me. All right. Let's see about this um, Dons and Divas extravaganza. Let's go. Hello. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm fine. Okay. So what's your name? Oh, Wendy. Yes. How you doing? This is Daryl. Hi, Daryl. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Jersey. Okay. How old are you, Daryl? I'm 25. What do you do for yourself? What makes you the don of Real your situation? Estate. <laughs> Real estate? Yes, ma'am. I own a few properties. Oh. Family business. You know, I inherited a few properties, so it allows me to uh, be pretty flexible. Live a good life. Mm. Hello. Yeah. No. I'm just. I'm just. <laughs> just. Just thinking about that for a moment. Okay. I like the way that sounds. So you're donning out your situation. Well, yeah. You know, family. You know, I come from a. You know, I'm from Princeton originally. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, if that if that means anything to you, but y yes, it does. You know. Mm -hmm. so, you know, life is pretty good. Yes, and and, hey. and and that's the purpose of the Dons and Divas extravaganza, to celebrate hey. wherever you are in life. You made it this far, and, and certainly if you consider yourself a Don or a Diva, where you are today is still not good enough. You, you're constantly striving for better. <laughs> you got children? Uh, no. You married? Uh, no, I'm not. You okay. make this girlfriend. Oh, you got a girlfriend. Are you bringing her to the Dons and Divas extravaganza? Yeah, of course. I'm sorry, ladies. Uh, but you do sound like the, the choice uh, dude. Uh, Daryl, we're going to put you on hold and take your information. I'll see you on December 22nd. Don't forget, it's the black affair. You must wear black, Daryl, okay? Oh, of course. And your little Susie Q must wear black, too. Oh, absolutely. Thank you very much, Wendy. Uh, open bar all night long. Does that mean anything to you, or do you, are you a Diet Coke man? I'm sorry? Do, do you drink uh, alcohol? Oh, of course. What's your drink of choice? Oh, you know, I get down with the brown juice just like you. There you go. Okay. We're going to have a good time. Exactly. Keep my head tight. You'll smell it up in there. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I'm loving his game. <laughs> Daryl, hold on. Th all right. Thank you, Daryl. I'll see you on December 22nd. All right. Take care, Wendy. And, all right. Take care, Daryl. This party's going to be great. And I got to tell you something. Goose, why are you holding out on these passes on me? Yeah, look, I got a second pair. Oh, really? Okay. Let's get another winner. Sure. Hello? Hello? Yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> hey, now. Not giving away no more tickets. Well, no, this is Wendy, and I have a pair, I think, for you. Ah, uh, that's what's up. I just got a few quiz questions, okay? What up? First of all, where are you from? I'm from Brooklyn. And what's your name? My name's Ty. <sighs> are you single? Yeah, very much. Mm, I predict you will hook up with a Jersey girl. What's up? Jersey girls love Brooklyn guys. I heard the freaks in Jersey. Ah. Uh 
<laughs> maybe that's why, well, I heard the freaks in Brooklyn, so maybe that's why we love each other. Hey, what do you do for yourself, Ty? I'm saying I'm working to do some image processing for Google. Oh, very nice. How old are you? 29. I like it. I'm going to, uh, um, do you have a drink of choice, player? Uh, oh, passion. Passion. Thug passion. Thug passion. What? Wait, I haven't heard that recipe in a while. What? What is that recipe? Hennessy, Alizé, things like that. Yeah. <sighs> Don't forget, it's a black affair, so wear black, okay? I'll be in black, Wendy. And, and it's upscale, so that means not black jeans and black Tims. You know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> I know how to do it. All right, Ty, hold on a moment. And I Thanks gotta, a lot. You're very welcome. I got to tell you something. Uh, I have a pair of passes left over. Where are these passes coming from? I don't know. Let Let's take another one. Go. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi, Wendy. How are you? I'm good. And yourself? Good. Now, what's your name? Treve. Hi, Treve. What do you do for yourself? Well, I work at Methodist Hospital, Wendy. I study the brain. A neurologist in yes, the making? that's right. I've been doing this for 13 years, girl, since 1993. Look at you. And how old are you? I'm 37. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Uh, you still got a nice-looking physique? Oh, do I? Wow. I'm a size 30 waist. Oh, wow. Yeah, girl, of a 36 Boom, boom. Uh-huh. Okay, okay. Are you married? Are you boyfriend? No, I'm, not. I'm single. Okay. Who are you going to bring to the party? Because I'm going to give you a pair of passes. Oh, Wendy, I love you. Yes. One of my girlfriends, I guess. Uh, I don't want a man. Definitely not. Perfect. Okay, so Goose, um, that's Treve on line one. Ty is on line five. And Zoe, write this down. Daryl is on line three. And, and make a, mm-hmm. you know. Got all right. That. Yeah. Let, let Zoe know that. Thank you. Um, Hold on, Treve. And that's how we're going to be doing it for all sales on December 22nd. I'm excited. <clears throat> By the way, everybody, um, the woman with the face transplant, I heard about the story before I saw the actual woman. Did you see her actual, did you see the actual woman on TV? Yeah, they said she's going to have to be going through a lifetime of, of, you know, taking pills and a bit of pain and stuff like that. I gotta tell you, that transplant didn't look so bad. You gotta watch these animals, though. You know? Wasn't her face bitten off by um, a pit bull? Yeah. The first face transplant. Gee, if they perfect this, do you think by, you know, 2015, they're going, they're going to be, people are gonna be able to request them like a breast implant? Like, I just don't like my whole face. Just take it off and just replace it. What about criminals? Oh, please. Perfect. Well, I've always said it's, it's you know, once you saw off your fingertips or, or file off your, your, you know, your print, getting a, you know, a whole bunch of stuff done to your face, you could lay in the cut and just, you have to start your life over again. That's the problem that I have with getting tattoos and stuff. Now, I'm not saying that we will ever have this problem, you know, me and you, you know, people who are listening. But say all of a sudden you kill somebody and you have to be on the lam. (laughs) Now you got the big tattoos. You know what I mean? It's just, you know, you're, you're making your chances slim for being on the run. So Brandy is coming back to TV. She's going to play a diehard New Yorker who moves to Los Angeles to take a job as an entertainment editor. She's doing a pilot for an untitled project, but it's going to be written by the creator of Girlfriends, Mara Brock Akil. Now, if Mara Brock Akil is the creator, what does uh, Frazier have to do with Girlfriends? He's the executive producer? Executive producer. Okay. So, listen, Mara first met Brandy and her brother Ray J on the Sinbad show where Ray J was a cast member and Mara was a production assistant. And now Brandy crossed, or this this Mara Akil crossed paths with Brandy and Ray J. And... Here she is saying, here's her quote, I truly believe that Brandy deserves a wonderful platform to return to television. I'd like to be the one who gives her her next big hit. I think that she'll do it with this. She's got a more likely chance of doing it with TV in a great sitcom than she does with a CD. I mean, we've gone the CD route. 
And I don't think people are sick and tired of Brandy. I think that they'd give her a chance. With TV. With TV. Yes. <laughs> you preface that with TV, please. <laughs> Can we talk wine? Are you going to cut me off, Goose? Yep. <laughs> Don't go on you. Well, we're going to talk wine tomorrow during Advice Hour. I've got, you know, there's a lot of celebrities involved with um, the liquor business. And some of these, bo- most of these bottles are all affordable for the holidays. Look at this here. You can get a bottle of Rolling Stone Cabernet Sauvignon. It's a black bottle. Look at the, how good it looks. Just with the Rolling Stone tongue lip insignia. Wouldn't you love to have that as a gift? Guess what? You can go to... Damn, I'm getting cut off. Anyway, it's 40 bucks for the bottle. And isn't this a... All right, I gotta go. (laughs) All right. All right, I'm going to my black tie formal. You know, God willing, we'll be together again tomorrow. I love you guys for listening today. Take care of one another. Bonds up next with the Quiet Storm on 107.5 WBLS. Bye. Yes, I am up next. <laughs> Wendy Williams Broadcast Day has completed. Oh man! And WBLS music starts next. Hey, if you missed the Steve Harvey Morning Show, here is some of what you missed. Dr. Stewart, that's all to be Good morning. How you doing, Steve? God bless. Hello. What type of doctor are you, dog? Orthopedic. Orthopedic? Yes. Ain't that for shoes? No. Ain't that what no. is that? That's a whole totally different. They either get it. That's podiatrist. They get us all mixed up. Orthopedic is a bone special. Podiatrist. Ain't that for kids? No. <laughs> oh, <laughs> quit while you're I'm sorry. My medical you know. knowledge is so ignorant.